Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk here on Dork Tales. I'm your Dungeon Master, Kelly. I use he and him as my pronouns. And folks, we are going to be diving into the second half of Fandelver and Below. We're going to do the Shattered Obelisk part. And I'm really excited about this because as you were looking at this module, you can absolutely see the evolution of uh, basically 5e from Lost Minds to the present day. And I think it makes a really, really cool module. Uh, we're going to be getting into that. And a uh, quick reminder that uh, this is uh, going to go a little off the rails at times. We're going to try to uh, keep a little bit of that vanilla flavor while still making the game our own. Like, you know, Jeff, the anthropologist spectator. He was a spectator, right? I'm sure he was. Gazer? Something like that. Anyway. Um, so, uh, let's go around and say hello to our cast, starting with Christine. Hello, I'm Christine, mod and bat bonner, bot banner extraordinaire. <laughs> I got that sucker in like 20 seconds. I was wondering what the hell was going on in the chat. <laughs> All right, cool. Like, <laughs> watching you right in that moment. We're always watching, obviously. We're always but anyways, watching. I'm Christine, I use she, her pronouns, and tonight I play Lady Alessandra Celeste Martin Barroquel. I think I got that in the right order. You're getting so Our fast with that. Our Paladin. Nice. All right, over in the corner, uh, recovered from walking the Nor, it is Caitlin. Hello. Oh, man, just before you were transitioning to me, my heart was beating real fast. Hello, I'm Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and tonight I'll be playing Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling artificer alchemist of the group. Nice. Why was your heart beating so fast? I don't know. Nervous. It's been a You're little back. while. It's I'm been back. a while. Been you a know, while. it's also been a while. Uh, you know, I love that song. I also love lyrics to that song. Amy, you know something about lyrics. Yeah, that was that was a hell of a segue. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Amy. Pronouns are she, her, they, them. I am playing Lyric, the tiefling bard, College of Creation. And I am... Next time I decide to have a wig and horns that are not like directly fixed to the horn, the wig in any way, punch me in the head so I don't do it because I'll punch you down and shake you is what you're saying. I punch you in the head? Yeah, I said punch me in the head so I don't do it. Okay. Oh, you oh it's not in general. No, oh, okay. no, no, no. Specifically. That's not right. an, that is not a, an open invitation. It's a very specific context. Oh, okay. Sounds good. All right. Um... A very specific context context for talking about Krista. I don't know. You kind of killed my segue there, but hi, Krista. Hi, I'm Krista. I usually they or her them pronouns, and I play Carmilla Alazarin, our Dampier Battlemaster fighter. Dampier. All right. Welcome back, Krista. <laughs> and uh, finally, last but not least, uh, and Chris, I noticed your hair is more blue. Did you blue yourself today or? I blew myself and others. Uh, it's a uh, it's a spray can. It makes it really easy. Oh yeah. Not the only thing that's stained. Uh, hi, my Not name the is. Not the only Chris. thing that's sprayed. I am All playing right. Sindri. <laughs> All right, we send a dragon monk, uh, half elven, and he says uh, he or him pronouns. I use he or they pronouns. Uh, thanks for having me. I am super stoked to be back at it. God, I'm so excited to be back at this because, like, for like. We ended up taking a month off because, uh, folks, if you didn't know, or you're listening on podcast later, and you're like, why is the podcast late? Uh, it's because I went on vacation, and then on vacation, I got food poisoning and COVID at the same time. Uh, my first my first round of COVID, and uh, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting, but I did sleep for like a week. So um, that took me a little while. I also am still, still coughing a little bit, um, but otherwise, uh, I'm pretty good. So, are we ready to hop back in? Hell yeah, we are. Hell yeah, we are. We All right. So, sponsor Bookworm Games. <laughs> Damn straight. I that you know what that brought us back. Bookworm Games is like the smelling salt when we're unconscious. So, uh, and of course, before we begin, a big thank you to our sponsor for the night, Bookworm Games. Bookworm Games is where you can go to get a fantastic uh, ton of dice, like a literal ton of dice if you want to. Uh, you can save 15% with code DORKTALES, and you support a local, well, at least us, uh, a local small business. They're great people there, and very soon they're going to have published modules coming out, which I'm actually going to write for. Which, reminder, I got to get that that writer's agreement into you, Michael, um, which I will do tonight. Um, and it's going to be great. It's going to be pirate themed. It's going to be wonderful. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, Kelowna Curds, right. This is what I get for letting Droop near my router. We just had a stream crash. Uh, but hey, uh, Bookworm Games, you are amazing. Thank you so much for keeping everything on the air. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, and a big thank you to all of our patrons as well, because between the two of you, you're doing all the heavy lifting. I just show up and run games. Uh, besides that, uh, I'm very excited to say that in April, we are having our... Uh, Extra Life Tabletop Appreciation Weekend, which the schedule is almost done. I'm I'm going to juggle a couple of things just to see if we can fit in some of our new friends from Catchy Cantrips uh, into, into the guest spots, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and the games are ridiculous. You should have that schedule with, eh, within a week, probably. I just got to get it to all the players and make sure that everybody's okay. Uh, besides that, anybody have anything else they want to say before we begin? All right. I love it. <clears throat> so, without further ado, I think it's time for us to head into Fandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk here on Dork Tales. The cellar is cold. Unseasonably cold. The walls are lined with bundles of herbs drying as well as various powders, chemicals, and other concoctions. Strangely colored liquid forces its way through a series of tubes, slowly decanting above an open flame. There are two individuals here. In this very short cellar, one of them had to crouch down as she entered, before lying on a table, hastily fixed with straps in case something went wrong. The other was raised here, and found it easy to navigate the halfling-sized cellar. She grew up here. She knew where everything was. Everything that she had always worked with, or that her parents had worked with. And it was here that she hoped to make her first steps in curing her friend's condition. Carmilla, you were lying strapped down on that table inside of Anthea's parents' cellar. Anthea, what concoction were you working on to try to undampier your friend? We were using um, a concoction made of a certain fungus, um, one that looks like ghostly fingers when it comes out of the ground. We thought that perhaps because it's so light and it you know feeds on other things and perhaps it could have properties that would help reverse it i'm not sure was it gaseous intravenous or ingested it was ingested what did it taste like carmilla like sickly sweet earth and as you choked it down what happened I feel like it felt like nothing at first and then a bit of sort of a rumbling and then a sharp pain and then nothing. Um, oh. How do you feel? This say. <coughs> oh. Oh. This. Mm. Maybe That's... it takes a while. But maybe it doesn't, and maybe it's just wrong. Okay, well, you tell me if you feel anything different, and I'll go back to the drawing board. 
I really thought okay. that that one might have some good properties for you, but... I guess I'll just have to try something else. Hmm. Tashi went back I'll, to uh, work. stay here. Okay, yes. You do that. Now, whether or, whether or not Anthea realized the irony of your statement, you're still strapped to the table. <laughs> and as you watch her work, distilling other concoctions, grinding other herbs and stranger ingredients in a pestle, or in a mortar with a pestle, Pestle's the stick part, right? Yeah, I always mix that up. You notice that the room is not quite as dark as it was a moment ago. It's almost as if your eyes are devouring the darkness, chewing through it. And as you look at her, you realize that you're staring the excited, beating pulse on her throat. Can I get a wisdom check from everyone here with disadvantage, okay. with the exception of Sindri? Sindri, you may roll flat. With disadvantage? Wisdom with disadvantage. check? <laughs> yes. Hmm. I got a 12. You got a 12? Okay. That's a 9. Okay. To confirm, that's just adding my wisdom modifier to a yes. dice roll? Yes. Ooh. Three. You know, uh, Three. Perfect. 16. <laughs> 16. Yes. Yeah. Love it. We love to hear that here. <laughs> All right. And Christine, what'd you get? Uh, sorry, I'm just looking for my number. I'm finding my sheet again. Uh, 21. Holy crap. Okay. You are going to hear the braying of a horse. Both of you are going to be roused from your slumber. Alessandra, you are sleeping in your aunt's house. When you hear this noise, this loud outside your window, it's dark in Phantolin. And Thea, are you staying in the inn, or are you staying with Lady Alessandra in her house? Um, She did have an extra if, room. Yeah, if there's a room, she would be saving money so that she can do her okay. shop thing. Yeah. Both of you are going to hear the sound of a horse nearby, as well as the clip-clop of a horse adjusting on stone. It is very dark outside, and looking up at the moon, you can see that it is beginning to dip down beyond the tree line in the distance. It has to be three o'clock. Maybe even a I'd little bit later. I'd say that's to be expected, but it's kind of really early in the morning, right? 3 a.m.? Yeah, people don't okay. no, normally wake up until five or six like, around here. I guess here. it's about the afternoon. Uh, is she having company? I'm gonna tip, 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 tip to the window. Tipping to the window, you can see. Make me a perception roll. And what? Uh, flat, yeah. Uh, in this case, you'll actually absolutely be able to see flat just for this one instance. Uh, Lady Alessandra, what are you doing? I think she'll try and check out a window, but otherwise be moving towards the door with her sheath sword in hand. Like, she'll kind of, like... It's a bit of an odd time for somebody to be out on a horse and visiting. It is. And it's not directly outside your house. Make me a perception roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Thea, what'd you get? 18. 18? Yeah. Okay. Glancing uh, out... 20, 21 again. 21 yes. again. All right. The two of you are going to glance out. Now, this is the night of your return from Phandalin. You're probably a little buzzed off, or sleeping off that buzz around three o'clock in the morning, a little groggy. And as you look out the window, it's dark outside. And you'll see that there is a horse and cart parked outside, outside of 
the Fandal and Miners Exchange? A hooded figure carrying a lantern that they keep one, basically like a, like a hooded lantern as well, um, that's mostly smothered. You'll see a little light dancing in the distance as this hooded figure hops aboard the cart and with a little as quiet as they can kicks the horse into a pace heading northward. Uh, did it look like they might have stolen something? Hard to tell. Uh, make me an insight roll. Okay. Both of you can make me an insight roll. Otherwise, it's none of my business, but merchants protect merchants. True. That is not as good. Um, oh, the 16, because I get a plus six. Oh, 16? You're not Dirty sure. 20. There's definitely some. Nice. Dirty 20? There's definitely something kind of shady going on. This person is deliberately sneaking as quietly as they can. It'd be one thing to watch the light pollution, but most people sleep with their shutters. It keeps the bugs out and keeps uh, a bit of the warmth inside from the hearth. But, or hearth, if you if you'd like. Um, <clears throat> but as you are glancing out, you will see that this person is definitely, has the atmosphere of someone who's trying to sneak. Whether or not they're stealing that, the it's kind of hard to tell. But Alessandra, with that dirty twenty, I'll say that the horse doesn't seem to think that it's being stolen. Mm -hmm. Seems like somebody probably is trying to leave town quietly. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think she's just going to kind of watch to see if anything else happens. Uh, it is There's going no real to... reason yet to go chasing anybody down. Mm. It is going to wind its way north. Uh, around the corner and head up like it's leaving on the Tribor Trail to the north. It'll break your line of sight as it winds up uh, around the corner there, given where your house is along the Miner's Trail. Probably is nothing. Maybe nothing. It's odd enough to be suspicious, I think. Okay. But otherwise, odd, but not. I am fighting with the fact that I know what the hell was going on with the, the miners' exchange from like that symbol that my character it's, it's doesn't know. It's hard to know. keep that separate. It's hard to keep that different. So I'm trying very hard to be like, well, that's kind of sus. But also. <laughs> I don't know that part. <laughs> Anthea well, is just going to watch them until they leave. Look at the bed. Huh. I guess that's none of my business, though. Okay. And she's going to go back yeah. to bed. Alessandra's not going to do anything about <laughs> it, but she's going to remember it because it was just odd. Mm. She'll bring it up over breakfast or something. But... Okay. Right. And with that... Double check the door is secure. Go back to bed. You'll head back to sleep. The next morning comes quickly. And we find ourselves in Lyric's room inside of the inn. Lyric, how did you sleep last night? Probably terribly. I think she slept really bad. Can you do me a favor? Can you make me a charisma save? Sure, I'm gonna use a different dice though. That's probably a good idea. We'll find out. Oh, that's not much better, but uh, charisma's slightly more my jam. Uh, charisma save. 15. 15, okay. You are going to have had fitful sleep. And as you did, you were going to dream of things. I want you to do me a favor. Tell me 
Tell me about your home life before you went adventuring. Tell okay. me of a memory that for some reason you kept dreaming about. Hmm. Probably when she was maybe seven or eight going out to the market with her dad and stepmother with her younger siblings and being told to sort of distractedly told to look after herself or stay out of trouble while her parents were focused on looking after the younger ones and it's just sort of browsing through the stalls on her own and honestly having a blast And yet, when you think about that memory, when you dreamt about it last night, you started to remember things that only an adult would remember. As a child, you were full of wide-eyed wonderment, seeing all of the trinkets and baubles that were for sale, seeing all of the vendors and stalls and fresh fruit and meat and the animals that looked like a petting zoo, but as an adult, you'd know we're definitely um, going to market meant something very different. But now that you're an adult, the memory flashes back and you can see the adults watching you and whispering. What did your father look like? Very generic, like brown haired human. And what did your siblings look like? They look like, like regular boring humans. That's the one. I heard. What did your father do for a living? He is, in fact, a hunter. That stag. The stag that hangs above the bar. I heard he sold his soul to make that shot. It's got 22 points. I heard 23. The number of the hells. You remember them whispering and staring. And that is what you are going to remember as you start to wake up. However, you are going to be fine. You, you're you going to be maybe a little tired. No exhaustion, though. But as you awaken, you are going to do so with a sound coming from your bedside. It's a soft plucking of a dulcimer. And as you open your eyes, you're not alone in your room. Ah, you're awake. You hear a low, deep, rumbling voice say, by any chance do i know who this is does this you have no idea uh looking at the person next to you um you are going to see that there is a a well-muscled handsome like painfully handsome man with long blonde hair swept back down his shoulders as well as about a hemsworth growth of beard that's a that's a measurement now i've decided and he's strumming a dulcimer dressed in the finest crushed velvet doublet um, and a pair of fine leather breeches. Excuse me. I, I think you're in the wrong room. I'm exactly where I need to be, Lyric. And I know that I don't know you, so why are you here? And do I, I was... need to start calling out stranger danger? I'm just here to check in on you after your little adventure. Not sure why you'd be concerned with me. I'm not concerned with you at all, but it's my job to act like I am. Do you find you this form appealing? 
You don't much care for it. Why? Oh, you're one of those. No judgment. Are you going to mm, He yourself? rolls his shoulders and like pushes his hand through his hair. And as he does, his body is going to melt into the form of a voluptuous athletic woman. Sure, that's better. I still Excellent. don't know who in the hells you are. Colrath. You can call me your handler. We like to check I'm in. And from time to time, you made a deal. Back with the dragon. I'm here to monitor my master's investment. Deal. Mm hmm. You died. Or you would have. Does Lyric remember that? How much Make of that me an intelligence check. Cool. Ugh, that's cocked. Damn it. Damn it. It was almost a 19. Oh, and I rolled to a 2. 2? You're like, uh, no. Intelligence check. Even if I add anything to that, it's a big, that's going to be a big old no. Okay. Sounds good. It was cocked on a 19. Damn it. She'll lean in. You were fighting a dragon. You died and you made a pledge on the ruby ring. See, I recall the ring. I don't much recall the dying part. I think mm. I remember that. That's mm. rather significant. Slightly traumatic. Precisely. I'm just here and yet, to check on trauma? you. No trauma. For that, anyway. Would you like to remember? See, now I can't tell if you're just going to put different memories in my head. In <laughs> no, case, they'll be the real okay. ones. If you want to know what it's like to you. die. Oh, that's fair. Well, then you'll just have to trust me. I wouldn't lie to you. See, you're a stranger in my bedroom, and I don't know who you are other than I'm your name. I'm a beautiful name stranger some... in your bedroom. Isn't that exactly who you'd like? Not at this hour. I'd I brought like fruit. to continue sleeping. Fair. Do you like fruit? I brought grapes and melons. She reaches forward, hands you some grapes, and flexes herself, kind of pushing against the uh, the fasteners of her shirt. Juicy ones. No, thank you. You're no fun. I'm plenty fun. You, again, are a complete stranger in my bedroom. And you still haven't explained why you're here other than some vagaries about duty and a job you made so kindly explain leave? fine would explain you rather me leave or, you... or ma rather me explain honestly i'd like to never see you again well that's not going to happen then please explain you made a pact with my mistress and i'm here to check on you consider me your caseworker do you have it in writing My mistress does. I'd love a copy. Fine. She'll hold out her hand, snap her fingers, and a line of fire will appear in her hand that will materialize into a long parchment scroll. Fine. There you go. Thank you. And Lyra's going to unroll it and start looking at it. <laughs> it is very long. And uh, yep. here to be, the party's enclosed. Uh, it's basically like the terms and conditions on like an iPhone. Like it's She's it's going to take you a while. The entire thing. And uh, can you do me a favor to try to understand this? Can you please make me a... Uh, I will allow this as a history roll. Okay. 
Oh my god, my dice fucking hate me tonight. Holy shit, that is three separate dice. Um, three separate but dice? But this re-roll um, is going to give me 12. 12? Uh, basically, it it doesn't seem that bad. It looks like you accepted a contract for your life uh, that mm -hmm. only promises a portion of your soul to hell. As a treat, a little hmm. bit, which can be um, which can be repaid and services rendered. Okay, I'm going to need to consult my lawyer. The only problem is that if you talk to this, talk about this with anyone, it could be disastrous for them. Subsection G12, paragraph 4A, subclause X. Ah. So Think of it this I way. Just don't speak of it directly. You know In what? Hypotheticals? Hypotheticals are wonderful. Good luck with all the loopholes. If you can find oh, them. Oh, so there's loopholes. Excellent. There are loopholes in every it's contract. Hmm. Presently, that little contract says that we saved your life in exchange for three favors. Hmm. To be called in at our leisure. But I could be convinced to lower that number. And so who is our is that in here does it say yes lyric is scanning you read trying to figure out who the hell she signed her, her soul off to uh she does i speak common infernal and draconic all right so uh taking a look at that uh very clearly as you roll it up Roll it out like a. It, it's it's sixty six pages long. Mm -hmm. Of course it is. Okay, and six inches. Uh, and uh, as you unroll it, uh, oh, pardon me, it's sixty six feet long, is what I meant to say, and okay. six inches. Uh, as you unroll it, you are going to see that you have signed a pact with Glacia, the Arch Devil of Melbolga, or Melbolge. Hmm. Does Lyric know who that is? You can make me a religion roll. I would love to. I want to see. You if know my that you were singing a song about speak. her the other night. I mean, in some context, I don't know if it actually specifies that clearly. Hmm, we'll see if this religion check passes. Uh, religion, it's not my strong suit, but I'm gonna spend my determination. Sounds good. To make that a 16. A 16? Um, you are going to recognize <laughs> that um, uh, Glacia was the archdevil. Uh, the tyranny of turmoil um, is another word for Melbolge. Uh, the crushing lands, which were ruled over by the Lord of the Six, the Queen of the Erinyes, the Princess of Hell, Princess of Night, and the Dark Prodigy, the daughter of of Asmodeus. Not sure why she has an interest in me, but okay, I see that this all checks out. It's probably because you're a tiefling. Don't you know infernal blood runs through your veins? Someone in yeah, your I history made an part. infernal pact. Or slept with someone infernal. <laughs> Hopefully they took a resist fire potion first. I don't know. I never asked. Hmm. Probably best. Anyway, I'm just here to check in on you and to remind you that we'll be watching. What do you actually look like? <laughs> Is that rude? Was that rude of me? No. I look like this. And as she says that, uh, can you make me a charisma save, please? 
Cool. It's a 23. Nice. You are going to be fine. Uh, she is going to turn into a, a six-horned, four-winged, serrated-tailed, black, well, red-skinned, but blackened by fire, demon. With a beautiful what smile. This? Sometimes it's easier. You see, the, before you were just putting on a front. This is more authentic. <clears throat> it lets out a little huff of steam and smoke and sets down the dulcimer. I think I'm going to like working with you quite a lot. Lyric. It was and Kolrath, correct? Kolrath. Kolrath? Yes. Hmm. Then I suppose I will be pleased to make your acquaintance. As odd as this particular circumstance is, couldn't you have approached me out when I'm shopping? Just sort of a... You do tend to cling to your mortal friends. Yeah, they're delightful. This was more intimate. Continue to argue that this is also very strange a danger, but I suppose we're beyond that now. We're very well acquainted. We are at least somewhat acquainted. I look forward to getting to know you. If you'll excuse me. Do we handshake or anything to his greeting or to... Handshake? Ugh, germs. You should... How about a fist bump? Sure. This giant scaled hand gives you a fist bump. Be seeing you, Lyric. And a pentagram of fire erupts on the ground, and they will just sink into it, leaving only the smell of brins brimstone and burnt hair in the room. Hmm. I wonder if that was another hallucination. I've been having a lot of those. Am I still dreaming? Meanwhile, as you are wondering if you're still dreaming, we pan across the wall to where Carmilla is sleeping. A sunbeam pokes through the curtain and hits you directly in the face, and you feel this, like, guttural terror for a second before you realize that this is probably okay. This is probably okay. The sun is probably okay. <laughs> not, not that far gone yet. Yeah. You had a pretty good night and retired back to this room. You had dreams. Your dream started off with that memory of Anthea. And I must spend a drama bomb because I got him. And uh, you are going to remember being strapped down on that table, watching Anthea, watching the pulse of her throat, feeling that hunger rise inside of you. And you remember averting your gaze to the wall, except this time it wasn't just stone there. There was a woman standing there, not just any woman, a beautiful young paladin dressed in a flowing, white, lacy negligee. A simple slip. And she cupped your cheek and said, It's all right. It's all right, Carmilla. We'll get through this together. And then she climbed onto the table with you, and the dream got very cozy indeed. And that is what you're going to wake up to, kind of like you're you realize that like you're waking up like gumming your pillow, like going hung hung hung.
That's that's the best drama bomb I've ever spent. <laughs> uh, she has like poked a couple of holes in it because she hasn't filed her fangs in a while. A feather stuck to one. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Uh, she's somewhat she, she isn't used to having a room to herself now because like mm -hmm. she's gotten used to traveling with Anthea so if they even have a room they're like sharing a room um, and just sort of instinctively sort of looks around to see if anyone else is there and goes <clears throat> hmm? nobody I think I think I, I don't know if we decide how many rooms did uh, 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 Alessandra's place have. So there are, I believe there were two rooms. So if you do you okay. think that then you would have probably stayed... would have stayed in the in the inn for the night back. I think she stayed in the okay. inn. Fair. So uh, yeah. Um... So she looks around and realizes no one else is there and kind of just like, ugh. <laughs> more pillows puff as she sort of like covers her face with the pillow. And then, can you make me a perception roll? Actually, what's your passive perception? Uh, ten. Ten. Make me a perception roll with advantage. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that's a six and an eight. So a six and a six and an eight. You're gonna smell like you can't quite place it, but something starts smelling kind of funky. You're wondering if someone like maybe spilled some manure outside or something. It's a real farty, sulfuric smell she'll kind of get up and start look like she'll toss back she probably wears like a night shirt kind of thing and starts looking around uh looking out the window you're going to see that someone is running down the street quickly shouting it looks like they're running toward the town hall she's gonna try to listen see if she can hear what they're saying help help Actually, pardon me, not running toward the town hall, running toward the uh, running toward the town green. So kind of like right next to the inn. Help! Help! Prisoners escaped! The prisoners escaped! Uh, she's going to quickly grab her pants and her boots and sort of hop out. Um, our uh, Lyric and... Um, Sindri, you're both staying at the inn, right? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, although, uh, let me ask, Sindri, uh, okay. were you sleeping in your own room tonight? No. Uh, so, Sindri decided, uh, is definitely renting a room at the inn, but not, has never spent the night there. Yep, okay. Sounds good. We'll, uh, we'll pick that up in a minute. Uh, she bangs on Sindri's door, uh, and the then bangs on Lyric's door, and then just keeps running. Lyric, there is a bang at your door as you're wondering whether or not you are asleep. What do you do? Shit. Uh, Lyric's gonna get up and go to the door. Uh, you are going to see Carmilla, like, grabbing her things and running down the stairs. Where's the fire? I don't know, but they said some of the prisoners escaped. I don't know which ones. I assume ours? She's kind of, like, tripping down the stairs, basically, and making sure her sword's attached and starts booking it. All right. Not sure what Hosna can do, but okay. Grab Sindri and meet me outside. Uh, um, downstairs, is that is the little kid that works at the bar here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tobin's kid is absolutely there. He's uh, polishing up one of the tables right now and looks up at you as you, as you rush down. He's groggy-eyed. You can see, like, sleep caked in the corners of his eyes. Oh, good morning, Carmilla. I, Bra I, I, need, is... I need you to go grab no no breakfast I need you huh? to run and find Ellis, Lady Alessandra and Antia they are at Lady Alessandra's aunt's place can you go get them y y I'm supposed to be setting the tables but uh okay yeah here she hands him a gold and says, holy gold. shit okay and you're gonna hear from the back room language young man <laughs> 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 and he's going to run out the front door. Sorry. Awesome. Uh, and then she'll run the other direction toward the green to the guy shouting. 
All right, sounds good. Uh, we're going to cut across the town at this point into a uh, into a small but comfortable house. It's not really worth much, but it's comfortable with large, um, almost like bulkhead, like halfling style architecture. It's a little tight, but it's cozy. And we're going to cut to a fairly uh, full bed. This type of house doesn't really lend itself to king-sized or queen-sized beds. This double to the previous occupants would have been the equivalent of a California king. But in this double, you can see the shape of two well-conditioned men lying against each other. Sindri, you can smell just a mix of sweat and fresh linen and a little bit of woody cologne tickling your nostril, as well as probably a little bit of chest hair. Sindri is going to just lie back and appreciate the moment and then also be kind of like holding on to the side of the bed so he doesn't fall out of it. And just kind of appreciate the moment. Uh, a calloused hand is going to kind of grab you by the small of the back and hold you in place as your as your butt wavers off the edge. You're not going anywhere. As long as you're holding on to me, I'm not. Good. Mm. <laughs> and Cinder, we'll just roll back over and go back to sleep. Mm. I, how did you sleep? Well, really good. Really good. I always sleep better now. Turns out the hammock's bad for me. I never understood how anyone could sleep in those things. Eh, necessity. You get tired enough and you don't worry about it. And then you get older and then you do worry about it. I hate to ask this now, but... As a half-elf, how old are you, anyway? Oh, that's a good question. What year is it? Mm. He'll say the year that I don't remember what it is, like 463 or 643 or something like that. And Sentry will say the age that he knows he is, and I certainly don't remember off the top of my head that I gave to you. I think I said uh, mid, mid-20s. mid Mid-20s? Okay, so he's a very young half-elf. I mean, yes. Okay. He's on the younger. He's on the young end of half, a half elf. Mm. Oh, good. I'm not with a cradle robber. <laughs> I mean, I could just be pretending. Mm. I'm not. <laughs> That's fine. You've seen enough of the world. I can see it in your eyes. You've got knowledge beyond your years. Well, now I'm starting to sound old, but I'll take it. <laughs> wow. I think you've actually done more adventuring than me. Most of mine has been along this little chunk of the Sword Coast. You've seen the world. What's your favorite place? Sindri will uh, take some time, look up at the ceiling. I've seen all the world, or uh, not all the world, I've seen a lot of it. I've seen a lot of the Sword Coast. I've seen Baldur's Deep and Baldur's Deep and Walter, Water, eh, Baldur's Gate and Waterdeep. I've seen Candlekeep. I've been in Neverwinter. Mm -hmm. But just around Candlekeep, as, you, as you're on the open sea and you turn the corner going north, and you get the sun sunrise coming over the over the keep. There's nothing quite like it. That sounds lovely. Although, to my credit, I always prefer uh, when I have the option going south. <laughs> and. Uh... He will start to slink down the bed uh, under the sheet, but as he does, you're going to hear Lady Alessandra! 
Let me out, Sandra! As like a kid runs by past this house onto the next one in the row. This sounds like a me problem. <laughs> Cinder's, excuse, hold that thought. Cinder will get up and. I know, I know, right? And Cinder will start like grabbing his clo clothing, hopping around. Uh, does not have any of his stuff with him, just has his clothing and his like <laughs> clothing and coin pouch with him. Uh, and right. then I'll be back. <laughs> and uh, runs out the door. All right. And as you run out the door, you are going to see Toblin's kid. You can Hip, see. What's going on? I don't know. I don't know. Carmilla told me that I had to go get Lady Alessandra and Lyric because there was trouble. Also, she was shouting for you. Uh -huh. Great. All right. Uh, Cindy will uh, go, go with him to get Lady Alessandra and Lyric. All right. Or not and Lyric. Uh, Anthea. All right. So uh, both of you are having a little bit of morning tea when you hear. Hello. Hello, Lady Alessandra. Lady Alessandra, Anthea. It's Pip. Pip Stonehill. Oh. It's All right, that sounds early. urgent. I suppose she'll hop off the chair and keep her tea in her hands. And Sindri! I've got Sindri here! Oh. Alessandra will go and open the door. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, uh, Lady Alessandra, Lady Alessandra, Lady... Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, you're... Um, you're not in your armor. Weird, I didn't even know you could take that off. Um, I guess I kind of thought of you like a turtle. Um, Lady Alessandra, uh, Carmilla is over at the inn and she's calling for you and she wanted me to come get you and she paid me a lot of money to do it. And I also found uh, Sindri on the way. Oh, and Anthea. Anthea should come too. She peeks out from behind. Okay. <laughs> Lady Alessandra is like, hello, I'm here. Are you two roommates now? Oh, that's is really there cool. something wrong or she just sent you to ask us to come over she looked pretty upset huh. you should probably hurry okay. and if not I, i'll buy you breakfast well i mean she also paid pip a lot of money apparently how much did she pay you not enough a a, 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 a cop a copper well, what Oh, well, well, Sandra is just going to important. stare at him. He got a 19 on his deception roll, so that's pretty good. <laughs> but he just uh, said, said before that, she paid him a lot. <laughs> I got a 15. To, 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 I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> a, that is a dirty 20 for intimidation. A, whoa! She's going to just stare at him, crossing her arms. Maybe it's a gold. Maybe it's, oh, look, look at that. It's a gold. It's, a, it's an actual gold coin. Oh, All right. That's I'm assuming urgent. that means trouble then. Probably. Yeah. The remains of breakfast is on the table. Do you want anything to eat? I don't have yeah. time to put it away then. Okay. We'll go eat it then. And he'll go inside. And she's going to go and get dressed while he clears her table for her. <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll meet you there. Hmm. All uh, right. Cinder will rush off to meet up with them. All right. So, Carmilla, you are going to make it to Town Hall, where you are going to see that there is a very, very stressed out Harbin Wester, the town master. He looks like he's just come out of his bed clothes and put on um, missing a couple of buttons or mix matching them so that his shirt's a little off. His he's partially untucked. His mustache has plumed up, up like an exploded firework. Uh, Master Wester, what has happened? It, it appears that someone has broken into the town hall. Broken the, 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 in? Or broken out? I, I, I'm not certain, but the, 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 the spider, he is gone. This is why you kill them. And she turns around and she just starts walking towards the town hall. Okay. Uh, and he will walk with you. <laughs> I I had one of my one of my deputies, uh, not that I really have deputies per se, but uh, I had one of my, um, one of, one of my work release prisoners uh, check it out this morning. Um, to do a bit of tidying, uh, under supervision, of course, and um, it appears that the, 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 the place is empty. The spider and a couple of the red brand brigands appear to have, have, have absconded. Vamoosed? Uh, she's just, she's just like, dead-eyed. 
on so, a on a war path towards the building. As you're strutting over, I'm going to say the camera's kind of like doing a doing a walk and talk as he's doing this, and I'm going to fold Lyric in as she kind of merges with the crowd of you two walking, and then Cindery is going to come I from the side. Yeah, when, when... Uh, Cindery's not in his room, <laughs> by the way. He's somewhere else. Oh, there he is. Cindery's here. Cindery's here. <laughs> uh, like, still putting on his poncho as he's running up. Uh, um, uh, Carmilla is in, like, her pants and boots. Her boots are, like, kind of, like, one's lower than the other. They're not pulled up all the way. Her shirt's, like, completely untucked, but her sword belt's over it. Um, she goes, the spider has escaped. We just caught him. Yes. And this is why when the furious beings are out, you kill them. And she just kind of keeps walking. And as you this say that, Alessandra and Anthea are going to head <laughs> around the corner. I have a feeling that Lyric is actually mostly in her clothing. They're just really, really rumpled because I'm she probably like passed out on her face in most of her clothes. Oh, uh, is something the matter? Pip didn't really know. You got your call. Was anything Didn't about the spider? Tell us anything. The spider has broken out with a couple of the other red brands. That would be <sighs> it. <sighs> well, that's annoying. Just Are there someone took them? So walking up to the town hall, you can see that the front door of the town hall building is like wide open of the town master's hall. And Harb and Wester will approach and say, "See, it was just like this when I, when I, when I, um, when I, when I came by today. Um, where, where, where is, where is he? Um, uh, where, uh, Elsa, Elsa." He points over where you see this, um, the dwarven bartender from the Stone Hill is wandering over. Hi, I was the one that brought over the 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 reformed one. To make him do his community service. Found the place wide open. We haven't gone in yet. We're uh, beyond to just peek in the door. And uh, as she's saying that, you're going to see that there is a very big, like, big sturdy red brand prisoner standing near her wearing a pair of leg cuffs. He's like, oh, hi there. <laughs> uh, how many red brands were... I think in you captured prison. about six of them. Because there, there right. were a bunch that have been doing, mm -hmm. like, what he's doing. Were all of them on board for that, or did a bunch of them leave? Uh, it looks like a bunch of them left, but this guy, the one who was like, I need to change my life. That guy yeah. uh, <laughs> has stuck around and has been doing community service the last couple days. Amazing. All right. Apparently, all of your friends were not as interested in reform as you were. What? What a bunch of jerks. You gotta so make you amends for what well. you do. I've learned that I like baking. That's, That's really wonderful. Cool. Baking's really I'm nice. Happy for you. Thanks. I hope to reform myself with time. You're off to a great start, I think. Yeah. Sorry is where it begins. Can we put this on hold for one sec? <laughs> Carmilla is already, like, looking around, like, investigating, like, digging through stuff. You can make me an investigation check. But yeah, Sindri, what do you want to do? Oh, no, I'm going to help uh, Carmilla, like, okay. with the search. Uh, maybe I should help you. What's your investigation? Uh, zero. Okay, I got plus one. I'll, All right. You can help me. <laughs> All right, so you can uh, go ahead and... Uh, oh, my God. What'd you roll? And that one? No, a nine and a four with advantage. Oh, so no. Ten. ten. So looking around, you're like, hmm, yep, that front door's open. And then you you open the door and you head inside and you look around. And you're like, yep, that cell door is open. And sure enough, what you're going to see mm -hmm. is that um, like the the back cell is open um, where there were six people and the spider. There is now nothing here. Um, it looks like they didn't rifle around in any desks or anything. They they just grabbed and went. 
do they leave tracks? There's six of them leaving. Maybe so they left something like a way, like a group of six of them leaving. So the two of you are uh, going to like kind of scrounge around and not really find much, unfortunately. But I will let the rest of the party make me a roll if they'd like. Okay, investigation. If you'd like to make an investigation roll, yeah. I think Alessandra is too busy to. making sure that this fellow gets it wow. adequate verbal reward of you're doing the right thing. Okay. Type right. attitude. So, Anthea, what'd you get? Whoa. Oh, my God. I forgot I have a plus seven, but that's only an 11. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's uh, all it takes. I am really? going... <laughs> I am going to spend the something good happens <laughs> to say that, yes, as you are looking around, a lot of you are going to see that there there are two cells in this room, one that was crowded with six people, one that the spider was just inside. Um, the spider's uh, component pouches have been taken, um, but the rest of like the, the bandits, like weapons and things were resold to the lion's head clo cloister. So they are not here at all. Um, so that's good. At least they're not armed. Um, however, uh, as you were looking around, you will find a soft trail of glitter leading from the spider cell out the front door. Okay, I got a 23 <laughs> on my investigation. Okay, so Lyric, as you are watching Anthea, Sindri, and Carmilla follow a trail of glitter out, um, you are going to see ru wagon ruts in the ground right outside of this recent ones from the night's <laughs> the night's doing um as well as footprints headed off to the west is someone better with tracking want to take a look at this oh, it's like, <laughs> that's way easier to follow than the glitter that's nice damn i wish we had that <laughs> oh yeah i mean there's that I mean, damn, I wish we had somewhere that could roll above a five. Like, Oh, shit. <laughs> that's so good. Not, that's including all this of us. Is, yeah, except this for is Lyric. It, wagon ruts and, and footsteps in that direction? I think they look recent, I think. Not exactly an excellent, like, a tracker. So, I mean, I uh, we should absolutely be tracking that. You think? I'll follow you. Okay. Nick's gonna try and follow the footsteps. All right. So following the footsteps, uh, you were gonna see that the wagon ruts seem to head north toward the Tribor Trail, but as you are following these tracks, it looks like they went past Lion Shield Cloister, and. As you're following them, they go up to the back door of the Lion's Head Cloister, and you're going to see there are some muddy footprints on the back stoop. Can you make me a um, just a perception roll? I can sure try. Yeah. Okay, this dice likes me slightly better. Perception, huh? Mm-hmm. That's a 15. With a 15, you're going to see that it looks like they tried to force the back door of the Lion's Head Cloister to get their equipment but it's bolted from the inside. Lion's Head takes a lot of um, a lot of care in making sure that they are a very secure building. And it looks like without any equipment, they couldn't just bust in and take their stuff, which is a nice change. It's probably for the best. Perhaps the tracks... even note it. No. So the tracks from there head moment. over to the north. Lyric's going to tear out a strip of parchment from her one of her notebooks and is going to scribble a looks like someone tried to break in be careful smiley face and of course she's gonna put like little level little horns on it too because that's how you do a smiley face when you're a tiefling all right it's sort of like doing the cat ears except it's like devil horns absolutely and she's now gonna stick it into the to the door as you're doing that, um, Sindri and Lyric have gone around that side of the building. Uh, what is everybody else doing? Are you going uh, with them? Are you... She's going to stand there with her hands on her hips and be like, maybe I didn't dream the person last night. And uh, as, as you're saying that... What? Oh, there was a person who was just kind of leaving from the mining exchange on a horse and they went 
They, well, I guess they went that way. It was about... Oh, just before dawn. Just before, just before dawn. I was very tired. Looks at camera. It didn't seem relevant. They didn't seem like they were stealing anything. What's the meaning of all of this noise? Oh. You hear a deep feminine voice say, walking up from the south. Harbin, my horse and cart have been stolen. You hear Halia Thornton. Oh, I guess they did. The head of the miners exchange say as she storms up. Who am I going to report this to? It's not like we have a constable. I pay good taxes around here to try to keep Thandalin in working order, and you can't even keep my cart and my horse. I liked that horse. I named it Sally. Do you know how hard it is for me to part with things I've named, Harbin? I, I, I just, I, 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 look, I, look, um, maybe, maybe these, uh, these adventurers can. She looks over at you. Good morning. Good morning. Let me guess. Problems with the prisoners? She glances and looks inside of the building. Yeah. Great. Just so, little. I'm invested in getting them back. So, we will also, or I won't speak for everyone else, but I'm going to try and get your wagon and your horse back. I would like to mm -hmm. see this, too. Yeah. I'm sure you're merchants protect you merchants. A bit. Do you keep your wagon locked up, or is it just like around the side, or? It's usually it very... around the side of the building. The horse is usually in its paddock. Ah. I assume the horse is relatively friendly, then. Yeah, she's pretty nice. I like her. Probably glue now. <sighs> Damn. Look, if you manage to find them, my horse, I'll <sighs> happily reward you. Or at least, maybe, you can consider yourself a friend of the Miner's Exchange. And it's at that moment that as she says that, you are going to hear an explosion over at the north northwest of town. And a little plume of smoke is going to erupt from the elder from the Edermath Orchard. Oh, no. That doesn't look good. Droop. Don't blame what? him yet. We don't know it was him. Oh, it this is 100% Droop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, th I think uh, Carmilla's already running. All right. So so why don't on. we go ahead and give me an initiative roll just to make sure that I know who gets there first. I will give... Carmilla, you can roll with advantage, and so can Sindri, since you were... Actually, pardon me, Sindri and Lyric were the ones that were, were scouting ahead. Kind of over by that. Yeah. All right. So hearing that, rushing over, um, you know what? That's going to be fantastic. Um, Carmilla, you are going to run ahead really quickly and are going to get there around the same time that Lyric and... Um, uh, that Lyric and Sindri do. Um, now, I have to ask, are um, Alessandra and Anthea running out as well, or are you staying staying at this building to look around? Oh, um... Oh. Well, I'm going to just roll to see how suspicious Alessandra is of anything, or how aware she might be that that might be a distraction to sure. overlook the... 11. 11? 11? Uh, but I feel like not very suspicious. I think not very suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be All suspicious. Right. Uh, she will run after them then. Okay. To go help. Anthea? Yeah, Anthea's going if it's a droop. She th she's worried about droop, but she's got little legs, so she's not getting there very fast. That sounds good. So you're going to you're gonna hop yeah. it over there as Oh, quickly. wait, I've got the boots. Oh, you do? You, you're, you're the speedy halfling now. I am the speedy halfling now. Okay, so she's going to go over there then. 
All right, rushing over, you are going to um, run over where you see that there is smoke coming out of the um, the cider press room off the side of the Edermath Orchard. Now, the Edermath Orchard itself, of course, has Mr. Edermath's house itself, but then it has a couple of small buildings around for the cider press, for the tanks, for all of that, and smoke is erupting out of one of them right now as you are going to see a pair of red brands stumble out green-faced and start retching on the ground. Oh, he got him. Yeah, and take that, you big bullies! Yeah, get him, Drew. Oh, sorry, I'm probably not there yet. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're very fast, actually. So you're going to be, like, keeping pace with Lyric. Just blah, 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 like little Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, man, I'm also blue. You're also blue. Um, So, uh, rushing out, the four of you are going to... Oh, pardon me, the five of you are going to reach there in time to see that the smoke is boiling out of this, this room. And... Um, Three red brand brigands are going to stumble out, choking and coughing, uh, one of which is bleeding from a number of cuts on their arms and legs. They're holding like a broken shovel as a cudgel, uh, which they're going to drop to the ground as they cough. And you will see that also uh, Darren Edermath, the uh, the drow former member of the Order of the Gauntlet, uh, is going to step out as well, brandishing a short sword. Let that be unless <laughs> he coughs violently and stumbles. What do you all do? I think Carmilla, if if the red brands seem like they're down, uh, will probably go to sort of catch uh, Edermath and sort of walk him away from the building. My lungs aren't quite what they used to be. You're not supposed to breathe smoke. You're not a fire elemental. <laughs> Although in my in my heyday, I did romance one. I will listen to the story when you're not hacking up half of your lung. <laughs> my one remaining good one. What happened? Encounter. Yes. <laughs> what happened? They came in when I went into the press at dawn, tried to take me hostage. It didn't work out for them. I'm very good at slipping bonds. Did the fire elemental? Mm hmm? No, I'm a drow. Is that from the fire? <laughs> no, I was raised as right. a bondage servant. Not that type. Right. I was raised I as a servant. I, I don't judge. It's drow society. There's not really much to judge. They tried to keep me hostage, but I guess old adventure, adventurers die hard. I leave a few weapons hidden around my estate. And I it helped. they wanted. Drew will say. They wanted to rob me and take my cart and ride it north, but they were going to wait until night. Thankfully, I've been having Droop try to play around with some of with some of the the concoctions and distillations inside of the cidery. Looks at flames. We were trying to make fire brandy. It worked technically. I think you took it a little That's too literally. That's kind of working. So is this one of those fires that you can put it with water? Uh, uh... Yeah, probably. I mean, it's spreading to, the, spreading to the hay. Uh, Sindri will use his one of his uses of his ice breath to, like, put the fire out. Whoa. What's cooler than being cold? <sighs> All right. Hold on. I, I know this one. Uh, and just like. Uh, he'll look over at one of the red brands and say, where are the rest of you? 
They abandoned us. Left us here to rot when they ran off with the spider. Yeah, so where did you leave? It sounded like a poor choice on your part. I think we were meant to be a distraction. But we couldn't go back to the, uh, to the sleeping giant. So we hid out here. We were gonna sneak away. We would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that meddling drow and his goblin. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, Are you considered I'm... that it's your own poor choices that put you in these situations? Oh, now you're sounding like the Grey. Who? That idiot that you converted to the cause of good and righteousness. Oh, he's doing so well. <laughs> We're very proud of him. He's cooking. Or baking. Both, probably. What a schmuck. Even something to do with food. Hmm. Why? You get food out of it. What's wrong with that? Well... It tastes good. You you were in the prisoner release like the why can't I think of it? It's the community service program, but I guess you can go to Neverwinter and see how they deal with brigands. It's much worse. Trust me. Not from personal yeah, experience. It just looks it, really terrible. If it takes me away from this stupid town, mm -hmm. I'll take a long drop or a short one. I'm happy to oblige, and she'll pull her sword and point it at his throat. There then again, options. I'm a fan of due process. <laughs> we we do respect due process. <laughs> Sindri like point Car looks. Carmilla like rolls her eyes. <laughs> Alessandra won't say anything to that at all. It's like didn't work this time. <laughs> Harbin Wesker. Wester will uh, will approach. Oh, it seems that you've managed to capture some of the brigands. Sort of. They kind of caught themselves. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like things are looking up for Fandolin. Where were... Don't jinx it. Oh, yes. Sorry. Where were you going? Honestly, anywhere but here. We were gonna try to get out, maybe make it uh, to Baldur's Gate. I got some family. Is the there. direction the other cart went, Baldur's Gate? But, no, pretty much everything to the north basically is the Tribor Trail. That's the main route in. So if you if you had to get out of Fandolin, you'd have to go north anyway, and then you would go to the west. Uh, in order to reach the high road, which is where you can uh, head north to Neverwinter or, um, I believe, south to Baldur's Gate. Okay. Look, you didn't have a destination you were going to. He's long gone. Well, Mostly at this point, I didn't actually... much care. Hmm? Let me see. Oh no, never mind. Yeah. Maybe not. Well, at the very <laughs> least, you can make sure that these brigands face justice. Harvin Wester will say. Hmm. Out of character, this man is exhausting. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I really I am I'm super regretting playing him as Snagglepuss instead of as Jackie Daytona, regular human mayor. <laughs> I feel like that was a lost opportunity. Also, so next, good. so next time it's going to be like, you know, Harbin Wester, regular human mayor. Hello, my good time boy. <laughs> like that's going to be the next time I run a, I, I run a mayor. It's going to be Fandolin. The to Fandolin. God, it's so good. Um, so what? <laughs> If these ones are locked up and and um, Sildar can get them up to Neverwinter for trial like we were supposed to, we can track the other ones down and get the cart back. We still have the trail. It's still warm. Tell you what, I think it would be a capital idea if you and Sildar and the others 
took these brigands to Neverwinter for trial now. Why give them a doing... chance to regroup? Look at the rest of the, the crew and be like, do we want to go to Neverwinter? Do we really want to do that now? Do we have anything else we're doing? I mean... I could probably reward you for the trip. At least enough to put Ooh. you in a nice room in Neverwinter. And to get so, a meal. Accommodations? Yes. What's, it would what's be a per business DM? trip. Oh. I Is could grant you a per diem. Per diem? For each of us? Um, I've never had a tax right? write off before. <laughs> <laughs> How many I can expense this? Question. How likely do you think it would be potentially, or how close is Neverwinter to like Alessandra's family estate? Um, I would say with inside of probably within like five miles. Like she actually might not want to go to Neverwinter. <laughs> you could always go incognito. I'm not quite sure how I'd hide the halo. <laughs> Put it under a bushel. Or a basket on my head. Yeah. yeah. All right. What'd Just you get on your persuasion roll? A thing of wheat. <laughs> Cream of wheat? A whole thing of wheat. A bushel. Oh. Bushel. All right. So, Lyric, persuasion to. Am I persuading? Is that what's happening? Yeah. 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 I asked you a minute okay. ago. Sorry. I missed that part because of everything okay. else was being said. Um, And I'm rolling it flat, I think, from the yeah. sounds of it. Okay. Well, you do have determination back. Oh, do I? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I don't know that I need it because that's a 21. Oh, sorry, 22. So long as you keep your accommodations modest, I imagine that we could offer a per diem to each of you. Although if any of you did want to bunk up, that would save the town a bit of coin. DM each would be acceptable. Sounds good. Let's, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. And then we'll get ready to go. Excellent. I will go and try to pro 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 procure so pro to, to procure some coin for your <laughs> Um, for your uh, expedition. And he will head off to do so, kind of tittering to himself. Oh my. We're never going to, I'm never going to financially recover from this. Are the three, um, the three red brands still here? Four? Three or four? The, the four are still there, yes. Four. There is the, well, there were three on the ground there, and then there is one that is thoroughly thrashed inside of the smoking building. Uh, that is now very cold, as Sindri breathed ice directly on where he was hiding. <laughs> and you could just hear, like, uh, uh, the chattering of teeth. Uh, Carmilla will go in and grab him by the collar and drag him out. <gasps> hey, watch where you grab. Hold on, I got this. Watch where you grab. <laughs> Sounds <cutting. laughs> Uh, she instead drops him by the collar and grabs his throat and lifts him up what? and goes, is this better? No, this is, this is objectively worse. <laughs> <laughs> drops him with his friends. Uh, worse. Okay. So we'll all take turns watching these idiots while the, the others get ready. I guess that makes the most sense. Is there any point in putting them back in the jail? Not really. I mean, we can put them there and then have one of us watch them. It makes it, it easier. Make it easier to watch them. Mm, yeah, that's true. All right, bozos, up you get. All right. So with that, you're gonna march them back to jail, put them in, and prepare for a trip to Neverwinter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Lyra's gonna go get a signed and stamped writ saying that there's a per diem. <laughs> you you will absolutely get your per diem. You are now a government. Uh, you are now a government employee, Lyric. Do we get Congratulations. benefits? Congratulations. 
hey, they want us to be doing stuff for their town and making us run all these errands. Right. We might as well be on the payroll. No, we're out of time duration. No benefits. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, you're just you're you're tapped. Womp womp. Contractors. Yeah. Contractors. <laughs> all right. Oh, we're consult. Well, we're consultants. We're very expensive. You're very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> So you get your per diem set. It's enough to basically cover um, food and lodgings in Neverwinter uh, for two nights. And uh, with that, I think that as you're preparing to head to Neverwinter, we're going to take a quick break. So don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in about five. See you then. And welcome back. This is the part of the program where we talk to the chat. When I edit this later, I'm going to be very confused while I'm doing this voice. Hey, bleh. Uh, bleh. I do not hey, always bleh. bleh, bleh, bleh. I usually bleh, bleh, bleh. So hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is the part of the program where we're going to talk to the chat for a couple minutes because it is good to be back. Oh, God. I really wanted to come back last week, but I was really happy to get that how-to episode out of the way um because i was like oh do we do it do we not do it i feel like it was good to do it so anyway welcome back thank you for all the raids earlier by the way a big thank you to who was it It was blackwater D, &D. it was um it was swole initiative it was goblins robbie landis oh robbie landis paladins archives uh uh was it goblins and goblets yeah i feel like escalia it, yeah i got like six raids you guys are all amazing thank you At so least. much and if you're sticking around thank you thank you thank you thank you um welcome back hey same to you razor blade uh and uh big thank you today i was over on catchy cantrips uh chatting about stuff today and um it was fun uh, i was talking with ash from catchy cantrips and just kind of like hanging out doing like a rapid fire thing and oh arvettis you don't gotta do that thank you so much for the subs oh you're a sweetie Arvetus, uh, remind me if you have an NPC you want me to work in. It was actually really cool, guys. Um, at uh, so when you're in our on our Patreon, um, if you're basically a level ten patron or higher, um, you can pitch me a character that I can fold into a game, and it will be like like it happens when it happens. But like I finally um, in my shards of Nern homebrew game, the characters are down in the Underdark and they're traveling around. They're trying to do do like find their way back home. And uh, one of my high council members, LaRuke, was like, hey, I've got this character that I like, like, like my homebrew DMPC. So um, I, I'd love it if if she showed up in your game or they showed up in your game. And I was like, you know what? It, what's the deal? Oh, a tiefling bounty hunter who causes trouble and has a southern accent. I'm like, done, done. They are here immediately. Uh, so I was really Such happy a to character. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. I was able to fold them in immediately. But hey, if you're on the Patreon, send me a message on Discord or send me a message on Pat. Don't send messages on Patreon if you can. Nobody reads them. I, I, it, they've got the worst messaging system. But it, it plugs into Discord, and you can just send me a PM. I'll answer if it's you. Um, but yeah, Sindri just made me thirsty. Ooh, chat is flirty with you, Sindri. I just instituted did ASMR hell by yeah, <laughs> taking a big sip with right in front of the mic. So oh, uh, I was boy. like, oh yeah, I can just I can click my mouse and I can take a big sip of my carbonated drink. It'll be fine. Look over. I'm not muted. I'm not Shit. muted. God damn. <laughs> Sindri is a thirst trap. Oh god. Um, speaking of thirst traps, look at these new new cups that we got. We found the they're like they're mason jars, but they're like they're so fun. nice. They're super fancy and they're green. They're, they're square of, and there's pink ones. There's pink ones. But like they're we we got them because we're like, oh, these are the perfect like Victorian era game drinks. Like, oh yes. 
What? Hmm. They perfectly fit an entire can of soda and ice. It's it's pretty. Or great. one of our entire bottles of kombucha that we get fits into one. So I probably I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway because I didn't sign anything. Um, so we're planning uh, we're participating in Onyx PathCon this year again because we always do, and uh, I've been told what games they're uh, they're wanting because they do they you know it's trying to promote their products right, um, and to have some fun. But they want a lot of story path games, which means that I can run some they came from which is just great. And I need all of you to play because it's such a fun system. Uh, Chris, if you have not played They Came From, it's a horror movie. Like it's B-movie role-playing with like special powers that you can use to do things like uh, to pop out of character and say, ah, yes, the movie set that this is filmed on is too small for the zombies to get into this room. They can't I open the I door. Did I play this with Cal? Yes, yes, you did. Where yeah. was the camp? Yeah, shit's fun. Shit was really it's, fun. Shit, it's real fun. But they also said that they have some room for some mage and mage Victorian era games too. Uh, so if anybody wants to put on a frilly neckerchief, then you know, come join me. We can do a little side side hustle. Uh, for I one of our games. Fancy wizard. You can be a fancy wizard. You already are. You already are a fancy wizard, Chris. Um, Mostly. Mostly, mostly fancy. Um, so, uh, anybody else have anything cool to announce before we get ready to head back in? Uh, if you are in the Vancouver area, I think tickets might be sold out, but there are some available online. Careful, there's a bunch of scammers trying to sell tickets. You know mm. a con's gotten big when scammers are trying to sell tickets. Um, but uh, table saw, uh, Terminal City t- Tabletop convention. Uh, I am going to be running a game of Pigeons Eleven and a game of the Very Good Dogs of Chernobyl. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very good. Uh, both very, very good and fun, easy games. Uh, you should check out if you haven't checked them out. Uh, I will eventually get them played on here at some point. Um, but uh, they are very, very cool systems. Uh, so I'm very excited to go play. It's going to be my first. Actually, that's not true. It's not my first time running at a con. Um, but uh, it's my first time with like a full table of people really excited to play at a con. <laughs> that's going to be so good. Uh, uh, yeah. When is that? I think that's. Oh, and then th- it's next. It's this weekend, this coming weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the. I don't remember dates. and I don't have the my. Cough, cough. Yeah. The 16th. Up. Oh, God. It's, it's, it's time. Um, the 16th, 17th. The that Saturday, sounds Sunday. right. Because we've got uh, another episode of Radiant yes, Citadel so... on Saturday. Over on the Patreon. Yes. So yeah, 15th, 16th, 17th is when it is. Um, and then the weekend after that on the 23rd, uh, I'm going to go over to Tabletop Titties uh, for streaming for Survivors. Uh, I believe it's going to be at 1.30 PST, PM PST. Um, we're doing just a short little three-hour game. Uh, I don't know who's in it quite yet. Uh, Cal and Kelly from uh, from uh tabletop titties or sorry cat and kelly from tabletop titties are playing uh and then i'm still trying to wrangle a couple people up but it sounds like it might be uh nick and taryn uh the og fangirl uh who might play so uh if you want to come hang out and support a good cause or just come hang out and tell people about the cause because that's like supporting it nice so yeah it's it's that, really great. That's, that's me. <laughs> we we would normally be doing one of those, but it's like it bumps right up against Extra Life next month, and it just felt weird to have two charity yeah. fundraisers inside of like two weeks, um, because you, you guys have limited money, and uh, and I have limited money because I always end up giving a few hundred dollars whenever we run Extra Life or something, and I can't afford that right now. It's tax season. It's duck season, yeah. rabbit season, fire. I really want to do- have a hair and gone now. Um, <laughs> And then what else is really cool? Um, Avernus is coming. You already know about that. Uh, Secret Project C is coming in November. Uh, It's super secret. Um, And then thank you very much for for catching me on Catchy earlier. That was really nice to be able just to hang out and chat with Ash. Uh, I'm not sure if they put those up on YouTube, but if they do, you can go check that. It's really good. Or you go to Catchy Cantrips on on Twitch right now and... um, Uh, And then this week, uh, the last thing I'm going to mention before we hop back in is uh, World Building Wednesday is officially going to start this week because I've had, I've gotten over my illness for the most part, although it was very convenient that Edermath had a cough, so I was able to cough a bit, you know, as as he was choking on stuff, I was able to clear my lungs, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, But uh, World Building Wednesday is going to start at 12 Pacific, so P... 
DT now, I think. Um, so 12 o'clock, uh, it's going to go for two or three hours and I'm going to do some map building and some world building. I, uh, I'm going to try to do this beforehand, but I'm in the process of like fixing it's upside down, of course, uh, fixing the Elos map so that it has like rivers and mountains and stuff. Well, at least the, the Northern, the Northern islands map. The, the North America version there. So that'll be pretty good to have. Um, and then, yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. You come and join me. Uh, I've had time to work on the overlays, so it should actually be somewhat visual. Uh, and then I have a feeling that Mike's going to look at it and immediately tear it to shreds and redo them all for me. So um, that's fine. That's cool. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Uh, Mike's, a, Mike's a king. Um... Uh, so yeah, that's, that's all I've got to say. Uh, congratulations. Uh, oh, uh, if you're watching right now, Robin, congratulations on your new job. I know you just started today in your big secret food science job. Uh, you're awesome and you're going to do awesome. I hope you had a great day. Um, and then other team stuff, uh, Caitlin, your baby is big now and, um, apparently was blocking your way into your streaming room today. Yeah, I was I was in here kind of getting ready and I could just hear him wailing and tunk tunk as he knocks his head against the door because that's what he likes to do now is to Ooh, his head on new step. baby trick new oh. baby trick head yep. trauma that's great yep. okay um don't worry he'll be fine babies are invincible until you notice that they're hurt that's the rule right <gasps> oh no Accurate. I fall down Shh, don't, I don't fall acknowledge down. it don't acknowledge it it's, have you seen that comic that's like I got hit by a meteor <laughs> daddy a meteor hit me that's, oh, that's nice great. sweetie just don't acknowledge it don't acknowledge it yeah <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> god oh it's god so that's good. so good alright so without further ado folks um, let's head back can into... I do just one more thing <sighs> sure, I just want to give a big shout out to Taryn Thank you. One more thing. Uh, only because uh, it involves the OG fangirl Taryn, who we all love. We um, Taryn has been running an uh, a seven-player all-girls... It was eight players until I had to drop out. A seven-player all-girls or relatively femme-presenting people um, D&D game since 2018. They were almost entirely new players, except for me and Nick. And they are currently at level 20. They are almost done their campaign. They have played consistently every two weeks since 2018, uh, which is absolutely wild. Multiple of them have kids. Kids have been born during this campaign. There are campaign kids, like there are animator kids. Um, and I was in it up until about level eight, nine-ish, um, and then had to drop out just due to life and being more in Dork Tales. And uh, I, they, one of them even moved to Saskatchewan, isn't even in town anymore. Uh, the person from Saskatchewan was back in town. I snuck into town, didn't tell any of the players, only Taryn knew. And I got to surprise them at their table, bringing my character back as a 20th level paladin, berry, and fighter. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they killed me, uh, which was awesome. They, they opened a portal to hell and commanded me to walk into it so great times uh but it was an absolutely incredible game uh first first in-person game i've played since uh we recorded the podcast together and that was the first game in person i played for years um so it was very very fun and i feel like of all the DD people watching you know how tough it is to keep a game together yet let alone a seven player game for like five or six years yeah. taryn you're so, awesome first Krista, do you know what devil um, Taryn, like, sacrificed something to? Like, what ritual did she do to make this happen? I I know. She's got to release oh, it so we can all share oh, yeah. in it, because I don't know. Yeah, the mm. scheduling demon. I don't know who it was, but to Schedule someone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, yeah, ex precisely. So for those of you that uh, saw me over on Theros, my character uh, over on Lawful Stupid, uh, Ariana was my character. I played in that and I brought her back. Uh, the one that always drowns. She didn't drown this time. She died in the fire of hell, uh, but then became a saint for it after trying to kill her god. So, you know, gods are forgiving. fires of hell? I, yes, I, I I choose to believe so. 
<laughs> you could drown in that. But she was almost eaten by the druid who turned into a T-Rex. So, you know, that's I mean, kind of how she wanted to go out. That would have been pretty epic. That would have been pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for indulging me. I just felt like of all of my D and D people needed to appreciate that. <laughs> go, go, love on, go, love on Taryn. Ever, uh, thank you, Taryn, for being the longest and and uh, first patron of Dork Tales, or like the longest patron, anyway. So pretty, thank you so much. Yeah, pretty, 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 pretty close much. to the first, I think. And for bringing us pizza during that first extra life. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, all just right. came up with pictures of that the other day. Right? Isn't it weird? Time. Time is a river. Um, and we're drowning in it. Uh, speaking of which, let's hop back into... That doesn't, segue doesn't make any sense at all, but let's hop back into Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Hello, and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. You all make your way into Neverwinter and have a, um, a, pretty, a pretty chill time. You turn over the respective, um, the respective red brands into uh, into custody and spend a bit of time enjoying the sights, hiding yourself from any family that might see you, Lady Alessandra. And uh, as you are headed around, I is assist. anybody doing? Yes. I disguise kit. I assist. Mm. Lyric is shockingly good at hiding features apparently all right give me that disguise get roll then oh sure and tell me what you are doing to her to hide the halo and uh, you doing like a fake chin like what are we doing no, 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 no we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make it look like she's got like ears or horns or really really tall hair okay or something okay disguise oh. kit is a head uh, so you just like, do it's a tool check so yeah I would say, I'll say, yeah, it's a charisma. All right. So charisma or dexterity, okay. either one will work because it's all about presentation. Yeah, better. I mean, performance, uh, deception. Yeah, that's all charisma. So treat it so. as a trained skill check. Okay. Or a proficient skill check, I should say. I will probably need to try that a few times to find the right combination. Because sure. the first one is not a ideal. That's... Okay, so you put a nice, like a little black, like bowl cut wig on her, and the halo blows <laughs> right through it. <laughs> yeah, no, the first one was more like a, uh, like that was a test. Yeah, it was like a twelve or a ten. Oh, okay, let's try a different dice for that one. That is, that is not the right dice for this. We need to take approaches from a different angle. No, it doesn't quite fit your complexion. Hold, hold on. Let me just get this a little bit closer. Oh. Okay, so... Perhaps... Not... Perhaps not chartreuse. That is... Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Does that say? Ten. Yeah, no, that's a nope. I'm just gonna keep trying for a little bit. All better, right. much better. Third time's a charm. Much better with a uh, 18 plus that. 22. A 22? All right, so, Alessandra, you are going to be, uh, what, what lineage are you trying to hide her as? Are you going to try to hide her as a human? Uh, she has pointed ears, so an elf. You could also do a tiefling. Honestly, I'm probably going more tiefling. Okay, so you are going to end up painting her as a yellow-skinned tiefling with a blue beehive hair that covers up everything. Uh, you put her in a nice green dress that will uh, clash with everything, and you've even given her a pair of like red pearl, a red pearl necklace to wear. <clears throat> They'll never recognize you now. Dope. I feel like the point was more to maybe make me not catch attention versus catch all the attention. Have you looked at the other people around here? You're hardly the most eye-catching thing. Our hair matches. See? You, now there's you three seem of us. Familiar, though. Like a family. <laughs> 
Hmm. So that is how you are going around the city. Um, is there any, but it's going to work. It's going to cover up your halo entirely. And even when it glows through, it's just going to kind of like, it's not going to make your skin glow because your skin's already yellow. Right? Uh, so as you are headed around the city, is anybody doing anything special or do we want to just cut to you heading back? Is anybody doing any shopping? Carmilla. Uh, Carmilla is also hiding, um, like definitely has like a hood up and is, is cause there are people that are actually out for her too. Uh, they're just not local. So, but it is very possible that someone has come this way looking for her. So she's kind of like trying to stay on the DL, probably staying close to Anthea. Okay. Are you going to let Lyric disguise kit you as well? I think after seeing her take on Alessandra, she doesn't mention it and just like, puts a hood up and sort of tries to slink. All right. All right, fine. She 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 has a different sword now. Like her her ancestral sword is probably like under her cloak and her and Lightbringer is on her hip. She's wearing like full plate uh or not not full plate chain mail which she wouldn't have before. Mm -hmm. So like she, this all kind of looks the same but like she doesn't she doesn't look like some noble. She looks like some fighter. Perfect. Uh, you are going to have a pretty relaxing time going around Neverwinter. And as you do, you'll even be able to make it through like a number of like nice restaurants. You'll get a, uh, a nice hotel room looking overlooking like the bay. Um, it is really the city that does not sleep, a city that is without winter. Uh, there are a number of restaurants that you can eat at. I'm going to give you just a list of a couple so you can pick where you'd want to go. Uh, there's a place called Fable. There's a place called The Wall, The Olive Fox. Uh, the Coriander Clam, uh, the Amber Port, as well as um, you could also go to uh, Laguna. You could go to the Private Chamber, or you could go to the crim the Cinnamon Lobster. What was the first one? F fabled uh, or fabled? Uh, fabled. Well, that sounds just legendary. Uh, Carmilla really wants to go to the Olive Fox because it's like a tapas place and it it's really, is. really good. <laughs> but she's really worried that she'll like see someone she knows there. <laughs> and so oh. she doesn't say anything. Okay. So Lyric, as you are making your way in, we're going to cut in here. Can you make me a persuasion roll to try to talk your way into Fabled? Oh. I have to talk my way into Fabled? What? <laughs> as you are, <laughs> as you are trying to... It is pretty high end. It's very exclusive. There's a line out the door, and as you approach, there is, is a, a very snooty dwarf with a with a thin mustache standing at the front. Uh, that's yeah. gonna be a solid ten. Listen here, um, our nearest opening for Fable is next next Workers Day. Um, uh, what what do they say in common? Uh, one week, uh, one week and two days from today. So not quite a ten day, a nine day from here. You could just say you're busy today. With We're very busy. Available. Can't you see how busy we are? Looking over his shoulder, you see that there are two empty tables, actually. No, not really. Those are reserved for Netherwinter nobility. Are you a noble? Do they have to be Neverwinter nobility? What if they're from nobility from elsewhere? And what nobles do you happen to know? Lyric looks around for Carmilla and... <laughs> Carmilla, so Carmilla kind of sighs and just like pinches her nose. Uh, Camilla, they need a noble person. <laughs> and <laughs> where <clears throat> you are a noble, Miss Alizarin, and is going to. In, I would love to roll intimidate if I, I may. I would love you to. I would love you to. Because <laughs> I have advantage on it. Perfect. Let's see if I can actually oh, roll. He has this heard time. of you. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, that is 
a good number. Um, that is a 22. Hmm. Uh, oh, it appears that you are on the list after all, Miss Elazarin. Uh, please, uh, come, and uh, your table is already waiting. <clears throat> kind of shoot a glance at Lyric, and like, oh, God. <laughs> so And then follow. She takes you over to this nice table uh, where a... Um, where a lovely uh, purple-skinned uh, tiefling is going to wander out. Uh, the tail is covered with rings that wrap down it, and uh, she is going to walk out, hand out menus. Hi there, how you doing? Uh, I'll be your waitress today. My name is Whispers in the Dark. You can just call me call me Wisp, and uh, I am happy to be here. I'm pleased as punch. Uh, now today, I just need you to know that we do have a special on uh, on Sword Coast Sangria. We also have uh, Ooh, a special. <laughs> Absolutely, I can get one for the table if you'd like. Oh yes, please. Mm hmm. Uh, now, nobody here has a shellfish allergy. We do have a lot of fresh seafood in season right now. Perfect. So, uh, we've got Fried Shadow Gar on special today, as well as River Fennel and Orange Strudel. You don't think it would work, but it does. Chef Mormont. I'll try that. <laughs> Absolutely. Chef Mormont's an, an amazing chef. Honestly, she's mm -hmm. one of the best in the entire region. I think you'll really be uh, proud. Oh, uh, one thing I would warn you, though, if you do have a sensitive palate, please let me know, and I will have her tone down the spices. Uh, she is dwarven, after all, and they do have very strong taste buds. Yeah, that sounds perfect. All right, that sounds good. Uh, so if you look at the menu as well, we have um, we have uh, Arctic Kookaburra, uh, which has been shipped in from Icewind Dale. Uh, we have uh, Moon Rabbit Toast as well as uh, Sluonger Bonbons, um, Shamubana Bombay. We also have um, a, a Unicorn Pud, uh, like a puddin', not a... <clears throat> it sounds better in the Dwarven. Um, as well as uh, Oven Bake uh, Fluffy Siberian, uh, oh, sorry, um, Shiverian uh, Trout. And uh, pan fried uh, fruit skink. Uh, do you perhaps have a tasting menu? <laughs> Absolutely. Of course we do. Uh, I'll put you down for that. And um, is it, does anybody need anything in particular? Oh, we also have oysters on the half shell and, um, and a seafood cocktail. <laughs> Damn it, Chris. Uh, Got him. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so Sindri's just outside eating rat on a stick. Like, <laughs> this half orc either. merchant that's like pushing a rat card is like, it's like, good rat, right yeah. Yeah. Clash yeah. I can't. Did like Lyric pull like everybody else into this? I think, I think you were just kind of waiting over to a table. So. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> so I think like Alessandra's maybe looking outside, catching a glimpse of Sindri, kind of wishing she was out there. <laughs> So Sindri, the cut to smash cut to Sindri at this cart is good, right? Huh? You it's want really drink? good. It's spicy. How do you get this so spicy? Yes, I roll it in spice and then maybe <laughs> drop on grass. Can I get a couple more of these? I think my friends might want them when they get out of there. <laughs> yes, absolute. You want beverage with this? Yeah, sure. Can, pass okay. me a cold one. All right. I have two choices. I've got crab juice and Mountain Dew. Oh, crab juice. I'll take a six pack. All right. He hands you a six pack of crab juice. Uh, fresh squeezed. And uh, yeah, some extra rats uh, on sticks, which is going to be covered by your per diem. Don't worry. Um, and then um, Wispy is going to drop off your tasting menu, which is going to include flights of local ales. And the sangria. Job, you two. I've never been in a place like this before, and I've lived here my whole life. I guess I didn't really get out much, though. Well, anyway. Uh, when when Anthea goes to like pick up a fork, mm. uh, Carmilla just like reaches over, pulls it under your hand, hands you a different fork oh. for the thing you were trying to eat. Oh, thanks. I have no idea. 
Th they're so confusing. Why are they different sizes? I feel like Alessandra looks at it, looks at exactly the fork she should pick up. <laughs> I think the big one's too big for me, though. That's and does the I wrong the thing. One. Just to help cover she... her tracks even more. Carmilla instinctively Eric reaches Carmilla as she uses the wrong one. Is this the small fork for the small food? Or do they just have the options for depending on the whoever's eating? That's what I thought. It, small fork it, for small mouth. Makes sense. It it goes outside to inside as you go through the dishes. This is the first dish you take the outside fork, not but the inside you... fork. Oh, that's gonna make so many dishes to clean. Why would you do that? <clears throat> because you have many servants. Who's eating the oyster shell or the oysters? There yes. are fresh oysters. Um, you are going to see like a little like. as like a tendril of slime reaches across the table from Anthea's backpack and like mm. grabs an oyster shell and just starts dissolving it. Oh, sorry, I didn't even think about um oh. here. Hmm. Should pick Alessandra a little will pass some more over. Stuff. It it yeah. seems like Squish particularly jo enjoys the shrimp tails. Mm. Ooh. That's Perfect. very that's very handy cuz I won't eat them. Amazing. Awesome. It was it was perfect okay. though with the brat Seller. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah. When I done a lot of raspy me. voices that tonight. That killed me. So you have a uh, lovely meal. Oh, please continue. No, no, no. I, I'll, I was just going to continue on. You're good. So you have a lovely meal. Is anyone doing anything else inside of uh, inside of uh, Neverwinter? <clears throat> Probably grabbing like spell components. Absolutely. Oh, can I find a sending or like a, a pigeon or something Ooh. to send a message home? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I'm going to send a very brief note to my family and let them know say? that things are fine. It's great. Candle Keep continues to be fantastic. <laughs> I'm and, on uh, amazing. spring break in <laughs> Neverwinter. <laughs> As part of a work study. Make me a deception roll, uh, but use your... Yeah, you can use your charisma. Make me a deception roll. <laughs> Incredible! Okay, deception, you say. Yeah. Uh, that is a... 24... Fantastic. You are even going to pay extra so that they send a, a pigeon. Um, well, basically, you're going to pay extra for a falsified postmark that says from Candlekeep or something. Yep. Or you're going to cover your tracks real well. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have a probably have someone. Uh, she's probably been carrying a forged like uh like receipt for payment of tuition or something and like like a here saying like updates for your for your students kind of thing <laughs> just shove that all along be like here Lear you go is the finest student we've ever had the privilege of pupiling oh no 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 no! that would that would fail the deception completely oh, would it? okay, okay. Like, just, <laughs> Lyric is on just academic paint. probation <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the real one. Oh, okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Lyric exists. Yeah. She goes here. Yeah, yeah. Here's the receipt. <laughs> yeah. She is definitely a student. Lyric yes. has moderate attendance. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a, a notice memo to like send home about a field trip type thing like just so you know that's all that's great okay so yeah you'll be able to easily uh do that and um as you are uh are doing that um <clears throat> you are going to be able to get your spell components anthea um anybody who wants to do any shopping around you absolutely can um is there anything anybody's looking for in particular or just kind of uh I'm pro. How long were we in Neverwinter before? You can be there. You have two days worth of worth of time. 
You can stay longer oh, I mean, if you like want to pay. Before, like how long was I staying in Neverwinter? How long were you staying? Okay. I don't know. You, I, you, I, I, I would say okay. a, a week or two, probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. She she's probably trying to like see if she can like suss out some of the sort of underbelly to see if there's anyone been asking about her or okay. anyone any missives, but that can okay. who knows if she's find anything, but that'll be in the background. That'll be in the background. All right, Cinder, you had your finger up. What are you thinking of you doing? Uh Cinder's gonna buy a uh, cask of dwarven ale, like a good vintage of dwarven ale for uh Gundren to bring okay. back Sounds to good. uh Fandolin. Sounds great. You're gonna Souvenir. buy Souvenir. Uh, yeah, no, there's a nice cask of this uh this artisanal one from Icewind Dale called Mad Mountain. Yeah, absolutely bring it. If I can get two, I'll buy one for me and one for uh for Gundren, so. Sounds good. You absolutely can grab that. Um are you doing anything else? No. Nope, that... About that? Sounds good. All right. So Lyric, Cinder's, Cinder's, said... Cinder's good here. So I realize that I still am running around with my regular old like leather armor, which is not quite high enough AC, I do not think, for how much there is risk of danger. So I was thinking I would swap that out for a studded leather or something Sounds else. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a look again. Uh, you can absolutely go to uh, to Cromveal's um, protecting protection. Uh, so Cromveal's protection is ran by Enerig, Enerig uh, Cromveal, who's a, um, a middle-aged half-elf knight, kind of retired because he lost his leg during uh, a boating accident. We'll say um, <clears throat> it's not funny. Boating accidents can occur to anyone, um, but. Uh, so he's basically running this shop, um, kind of a short dude with uh, pockmarked goldish skin, a sun elf by by descent, um, and he'll be happy to sell it to you at uh, at exactly the price in the PHB. Strangely, oh, incredible, nice. And uh, he do we will... need any like health potions or anything? Because we kind of tapped out Vandalin. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can go around and buy some health potions from some of the local the, the local churches. Yes, thank you, Carmelo. <laughs> Does um uh Anthea, you got any hookups in the pharmaceuticals industry? You can. Uh, yeah, maybe. Go ahead and make me an Arcana roll. I don't know if it'd be good or bad though. Ah! I mean, at least I'm a pretty good customer for them, right? Um, wow, that sure is a roll. That's a thing. Um, Arcana is going to be 11 because I also get plus 7 to it. So there we yeah, go. Yeah, can I help? Because you know I kind of know where yeah. she's gone before. Um, you know what? Actually, what I'll, what I'll do is between that and Anthea growing up here and having parents who were artisans uh, and, and guild people, I'll give you advantage on this, Anthea. Oh, yay. So you can retroactively roll with, uh, with advantage. That is 19 then. 19 is way better. Um, yep. You are going to um, to know that there are a couple of places in town, some alchemists as well as some of the churches will sell stuff. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, there are a few shops we can go to. And the churches. Yeah, they're over this way. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so making your way downtown, you are going to wander into a, um, a... Are you going to a church or to an alchemist? Probably to an alchemist. I can pick up my supplies at the same time. Okay, so um, you are going to head to Roskini Apothecary and Herbal Delights, mm. uh, which is helmed by a... Um, a middle-aged rock gnome woman um, named Karzir. Karzir. Uh, Karzir is um, about two foot eleven. Uh, pretty standard looking for an uh, for a gnome, aside from the fact that she has a completely like cue ball bald head. Um, bright, bright eyes and really long eyelashes. Though you can do you think that she probably lost some of her hair in an accident? Mm, uh, but actually, kind of kind of fits her. Kind of got that Shanae oh. O'Connor type of look. Um, and uh, she definitely accents it by having like a bunch of like piercings and things around her ears and eyebrows. Uh, and as you enter, she'll happily greet you. Oh, Anthea. Hello. It's been Miss a Briarfoot, good to see you here. Oh, you good brought friends. You. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. We're looking. All for right. A what can I do for you? Yeah, we're looking for some healing potions, ready-made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ready-made healing like... potions. Yeah, and I'd like to see what kind of supplies you have. Mm. Well, I've got all the supplies you need to do any type of alchemy in the field. But as far as uh, healing potions, I've got quite a few on stock right now. Um, I've got some, some regular healing potions as well. It's some moderate healing potions. I even have a potion of supreme healing. That sounds perfect. Sorry, how many did you have? Uh, well, I'm almost an unlimited amount, really. It's it's based on your purse. Uh, right now, uh, I've got at least at least ten healing potions in stock right now. Uh, each one goes at a rate of one hundred gold pieces. Wow, is that pretty much the going price, or is that a little up? What I think. I mean, it's a competitive market. You could try making a donation to the church, but then, honestly, would you like to do that? Because each one of the churches has their own good. And if you piss off one of their gods, what's to say that the other gods are not going to smite your healing potion? Hmm. True. But, I mean, depending on how many you buy, I could make you an offer. Yeah, we're looking to buy quite a few, so... Hmm... Yeah, put your money on the what table and we'll here? discuss things. Uh, so I've got moderate healing potions. Those go for uh, 300 per. Uh, and then the Supreme goes for 750. Uh, but it'll wow. practically bring you back from the dead. Practically. Well, I certainly don't have 750. Ah, oh, so. that's too bad. <laughs> what do you have? Do we have party funds right now? Uh, yeah, you have your party funds on you. You also, um, there was a bunch of gold that was delivered to you um, after you rested. And um, did I give you that total? I, I don't Or did know. I say I was going to do it and then I got sick and forgot? I have a bunch have... of shit written down, but it's not the right, right values. Yeah, right. I have 110 written, but then I also have 293 on my sheet. I had a couple of games so... where I was not feeling well and did not take mm -hmm. any notes. Yeah. <laughs> and I am out of date now. All right. So you got 293. Oh, I have plus 60 G written down and 10% stake in the mine. Okay, good. That's what you got. So 60 G from, uh, from all of the sold uh, weapons mm -hmm. that Gundry right. brought back. Thank you very much for keeping good notes. Amy, take an inspiration. <laughs> cool. Um, I also have a note that I don't know if it got split up from earlier in that game, saying we had found nine gemstones worth 10 gold pieces each, 130 gold pieces, 190 electrum. Uh, I have that too. Nail, mug made of electrum and 15 platinum. I don't know if that got split. I think it did, though. Mm. Maybe. So Chris has it there. So, so. You got quite I, I don't have, like... It, it, I don't have that distributed uh, by the party. I don't think we split it up. I think we just oh, maybe we got that. I'll, okay, I'll convert just... that. I'll be one sec. Okay. Uh, and the 60 gold was per person as well. So each of you got that portion of all of the weapons that were seized from the, the bugbears and hobgoblins and goblins, which is honestly a pretty good deal. And 10% stake in the mine, which means that when you get back to Fan Fandolin, you might have some money. So feel free to shoot all of it. Like, just toss all your money right now. <laughs> oh, I have a note first that I have personally have six amethysts, but I don't know how much they're worth. Six amethysts? Uh, I will find out for you real quick. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Am, uh, uh, that's a fist size amethyst. That's Ooh. from a nerd. <clears throat> what do people think they have approximately? Like, what's their ballpark amounts on person right now? About 200. I have yet to split the 120 gold here. Between I've got about us. 200 now. Yeah. Can I uh, just ask if we uh, can sell the, um, the the mug for value or half price? Um, the mug. Uh, which mug was that? Uh, dwarven mug. It was 80 gold from the from the pile. Uh, if it's just an art piece, you'll be able to sell it at full. The amethysts are worth 300 gold. Woo. And okay. the, the, la cool. the last piece I want to bring up is the uh, 
sorry, uh, the class, the 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 fi fancy golden rings that we picked off off the corpse from in the mine. I think I have a value of 150 gold. One was the class ring of Silvery Moon. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Was that 150 uh, for the total? Uh, let me just double check. Uh, they are worth 150 gold pieces each. So that's 450. Whoa! Yeah, so you guys are yeah. actually doing pretty well. Holy smokes! Mm -hmm. we okay, so the fact that I have 463 written on my sheet is between reasonable. is reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, that's I just wanted to make sure I wasn't crazy. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So the amethysts are worth 300. I think that, that was from before, because I because I haven't bought anything. Like I haven't spent mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. So you're about to have a lot more lunches. Yeah. So for cool. uh for. <laughs> All the gold we got out of that last cave minus the electrum because I didn't uh I don't want to do that conversion. Uh <laughs> is uh we each have an additional uh two hundred and forty gold onto whatever else is. Wow. Um nice. Yeah. So that's pretty great. Yeah. Also we have we have a uh, dust of dryness as well. Yeah. That um, and I guess I can split the amethysts and sell those, or sell those and split it. The additional, yeah. so that was 300. So everybody gets 30 gold. Since we're here, mm -hmm. Alessandra will pick up a few things, like some powdered silver and iron and some yew leaves sure. and whatnot Absolutely. for spell components. Sounds good. You'll be able to just take, basically just erase your pocket change, so anything smaller than a gold, just erase that. And that'll cover okay. you in Anthea spell components. I figure there's not much point trying to buy diamonds for Revivify because I don't get that to level nine. Yeah, I wouldn't yet. It will probably run across some at some point. There's a lot of stuff underground. There's a good chance that you're going to find uh, you're going to find a diamond in a mine. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so I guess that the amethyst that's an extra sixty each. An extra sixty each. And I, what was it that? Chris just said it was what 200 and something 240 so everybody gets 300 40. Woo, nice 300 yeah that's pretty good so anyway the um the alchemist is going to kind of leer over so how much do you have oh actually i think i've forgotten a couple things but um i think we could probably do we i think we just need to talk about it sorry let's talk about it all right i'll Can just be surprised to give us the what is the price you give us for 10? Oh, for 10? Mm, well, make me a persuasion roll. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20? Nope, I, ha I have persuasion. 23. A 23? <laughs> Honestly, if you buy all 10, I could probably give you quite a discount. Um. Tell you what, how does a 25% discount sound to you? 75 each? 750 for 10? I think that sounds pretty good. That sounds could, good to me. You could try to negotiate further if you like. Uh. Do you want to push your luck? <laughs> uh. What about seven? Make me a persuasion roll. Okay. All right. Let's see if you do it. Uh, it's 22. Ooh. You drive a hard bargain. But if Anthea picks up her supplies here as well, I suppose we could do 700. I'll do that. It's a deal. She puts her tiny hand over She'll... the bar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shake. Shake. <laughs> Now, if you'd be interested as well, I do have a couple of special potions, if you'd be interested in such a thing. So I've got that, but I've also got potion, giant strength, makes you as strong as a frost giant. Ooh. That one's a bit expensive. That one's about 300. But I will honor that 30% uh, that discount for you. So that would take it down to only two hundred and six. Is that what is right? that stats wise? 
Uh, that raises your strength to 23. Now it's temporary. It only is only for an hour. But every little bit. You're not wrong. So that could be something you might be interested in. Yeah, but if not, I understand. split between all of us. Er, the four of us. You want four of them? No, I mean, especially if we split the cost between us and then just used it. Now, um, so I do have one other potion that might be of interest to you. So, between us girls, it's really hard, as you know, Anthea. Dating in water, um, what well, dating in water deep's hard too. Uh, but dating in Neverwinter, especially real when hard. you're not there. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I've had better luck in water deep than I've had in Neverwinter. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm 262 years old, and oh. it has been a rough five years. Let me just put it that way. Mm. I'm all a gnome, if you follow. Oh, God. So, I've been trying to brew something up. To um to make it a bit easier to get out there and meet meet the fellas. So, but here's the problem. Aside from the weirdos, the real freaky types who want me to dress in like frilly doll clothes. Anybody taller than a halfling isn't really my type. So, I've been working on this. And she reaches into a drawer and pulls out a pair of potions. One swirls with kind of gray, almost like mercury. The other one is kind of like this bubber, bubbling, effervescent blue liquid. This, she taps the blue one, is a potion of disguise self. Pretty easy. Ooh. Just changes your physical appearance a bit. Won't make you look taller. But that's where this comes in. She taps the other. It's a potion of enlarge. So, I've been working on this to turn myself into one of one of you types. She points at you, Carmilla. You know, you tall types. I mean, I can't just expect heels to do the trick for me. Yeah, you'd have to get really big heels. I understand. Mm-hmm. Now this make the problem is I've got to take both together when I do it because I, I I haven't done them together yet but I've been practicing with the enlarge the problem is the proportions are all wrong because as you see I'm a gnome so I've got big eyes big skookum eyes I can see all sorts of things but the problem is when my head's as big as her head I look like one of those troll dolls oh. I look like I've got I the googly mooglies <laughs> I am often willing to try Antia's experiments, but I don't know if we want to necessarily be trying new things on the battlefield. I mean, they're just normal potions. It's mostly the um, the utilization of them that could be useful. I mean, ah. think about Anthea at six feet tall. I'd be real tall. My hand, the things I could see from up there. You'd be able to reach things on the top shelf without a ladder. Wow. Never been able to Think do that. Think about grocery shopping. Wow. Which, I have to say, grocery shopping outside of the halfling and gnome areas of town is a real, it's, it's, honestly, it's a bit of racial profiling. Really. It's the problem there, is yeah. we go in there and everything's all stacked high, you know, because it's just, it's, it's just microaggressions. Full time. Yeah. Which, have you ever thought that the term microaggression is itself an aggression against us we folk? I hadn't thought about that before, but I will every time now. Mm-hmm. You should definitely, yeah. uh, definitely subscribe to my newsletter. Oh. Small complaints. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Uh, here. Uh, <laughs> do you have a form? I absolutely. She'll <laughs> hand you, like, a Perfect. golf pencil. I guess that's what she uses. <laughs> and it's yes, perfect. that was off the fly, Krista. I'm writing it down, though. Small complaints. <laughs> How much okay. um for your potions, then? Uh, well, I can honor the deal on the potion of growth. Um, or I could give them both to you together for a hundred. I'll take it. I'll sell them. 
All right, so you are going to walk out of there with 10 healing potions, basic 2d4 plus 2. Um, which, hey, it'll stabilize you. Uh, you'll also get a potion of growth, and a po which basically works as the enlarge on the enlarge potion spell, uh, and a potion of disguise self. Sounds good. And now I was thinking, we were talking about alchemist fire mm -hmm. earlier, but we've never actually bought it, I don't think. And that is totally fair. Uh, alchemist fire, eh, she'll cut you a deal. You can get it, you can get it for, uh, you can get each vial for 30, if you want it. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so I'll you can grab... get as many of those as you want. I'll grab three, mm -hmm. please. Thank All you. right, you'll easily be able to get those. Okay. Items, alchemist fire, yeah, fifty, and then you can also get acid if you want, or antitoxin, yeah, or holy water. Nice. That's been pretty useful. Honestly, it's pretty good. Can we do one of each? Yeah, you absolutely can. Uh, so if you get, get one of each, of uh, that yeah. will be 15 each for the vial of, of acid and the holy water. Uh, you know what? I'll say that, yeah, that'll be good. 15 each. All right. Anybody else doing any shopping or anything in Neverwinter? So, Lyric, you have exchanged your uh, your armor for some nice, snazzy new armor that is dyed a a lovely shade of what brown? Swapping out the uh, the leather armor for studded leather armor, so it's virtually the same, just now slightly sparkly. I guess. Nice. Um, I want to buy some bags of caltrops because that Absolutely. sounds like a really good idea. Um, Absolutely. And I just, I, I, I don't even know where I found this, but it's a, it's a common magic item that is a bottle of boundless coffee. Uh, that is from Strixhaven. Yeah. Would that be possibly something if there's like a Strixhaven, I don't the, know. Yes, a, you can like, go by, like you can go by a wizard shop. Like or something? So uh, what will happen is you can go by a wizard shop and uh, you... Uh, there are plenty of magical shops. You will go by... Do you want a Strixhaven person? You know what I'm going to do? Can you roll me a d6? <laughs> me? Yeah. Two. Well, that's exactly what I was expecting. Uh, you are going to walk inside of, uh, of a little magic shop. Or it's it's not really a magic shop so much as just a trading company that when you ask around for a place that sells magic items, you go to. And there is a very pretty but bored looking man standing behind the counter with long flowing white hair. Hello, welcome to Stevedore's Emporium. I'm Telbron, how can I help you today? He looks like he's about like 16, 17. I hear you have some interesting trinkets and magic items. Oh yeah, we've got tons of stuff. Um, uh, uh, that looks please. interesting. Oh, the never-ending coffee flask? Uh, yes, yeah. it's very useful. Very popular among students. Um, it's a bit expensive, though. Oh. How, how um, expensive? It is... Um, uh, the. Let me just check... Uh, that is, uh, 100 gold pieces. Oh. And is it the, dis the display model, or is there one in the back that's in a box? Uh, it is... You know, is that's a really good question. Discount? Um, hold on, let me check the back for you. He goes and, like, fumbles around in the back. You hear a bunch of stuff clatter and smash on the ground. Oh no, my dad's gonna kill me. And he's gonna stumble out and go, um. Uh, he looks absolutely terrified. Is and. Everything all right? Uh, I think I broke some things. Um, I think this is the only one we have left, though. I'm, I'm happy to sell it as the display model. Um. So? Is there a dis. Like a display? How much do you have model? on you? Uh, could you do it for 70? 
Uh huh. Yeah, I could do. I could do. I could do it for for seventy. Um. Uh. Okay. Uh, tell you what, I'll, I'll do it for fifty if you can. Um. If you could run across the street and give me some universal solvent, and some and some glue. Sure. I, I can do that. Okay. Cool. Miracle. Okay. Do that. <laughs> Oh crap, oh crap, oh and, crap. And oh, um here's some contacts for someone at the nearest port town in case you need to make a quick getaway. Are things okay here? Oh no, they find me. They always find me. Are you, are anyway. you in danger? Uh you know more than usual. Um uh, I can I you can help you disappear if you no, um, I just need glue. Well, here, here, I got some. Oh, thank the gods. Okay. Um, I think Owlbear I, glue. Uh, Very strong. Oh, Owlbear glue is, like, really strong. That's great. Okay, don't get it on your hands, Talbron. God, if my brother was here, he'd be able to help. And he goes back into the back and starts gluing together bits of things. Well, have a good day. I Sorry, just leave the money on the counter. He totally botched his check the back room roll, by the way. So yeah, you have a you have a decanter of boundless coffee. Fifty gold. God. All right. Oh, Traz. Oh, Traz. There you go. Catch Strixhaven tomorrow on Patreon. Um, all right. So um, this is like this is him doing like his summer internship for his family. Back before he went to school. Um, all right. Is anybody else doing anything inside of uh, Neverwinter, or Waterdeep, or Strixhaven? All right. Good. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. So after having a very relaxing stint uh, over in uh, in Neverwinter, you start heading back to Fandolin. It's on the morning of the third day, and honestly, you have seen that the um, uh, that the folks that you have brought up, the bandits, have been incarcerated. Uh, they are getting sent up to um, uh, to serve their time up in, Lu in, uh, in Luskin. Uh, so they're going to be very cold. Uh, and, uh, I hear that there is, uh, they are going to be serving under, um, one Jarnathan who's up there, uh, who is a very staunch warden. Um, uh, and will be, uh, it'll be a great trip for them, uh, said no one. <clears throat> but you are going to have a nice ride back on the wagon that you were loaned, uh, as you head down, back down the, the Tribor Trail and make your way toward... Fandolin. Is there anything that you're talking about or doing as you make your way? We didn't find any leads on the spider either. I realized that was kind of our reasoning for going, I think. Much like the spiders in real life, once you see it and look away, the spider has vanished into the, into the crevices behind your bed, never to be seen again. Why are you like this as a person? <laughs> <laughs> it's childhood trauma, probably. But anyway, keep going. <laughs> So I think there's something strange going on with some of the local shopkeepers. There was what? a very n nervous young man who was okay. possibly being held hostage or, or under duress of some sort. Very and he asked if he needed help. He sounded like he wouldn't be able to escape or they'd find him if he'd left, though. Are we having this conversation? Suspicious? like on our way back to Fandolin like day three later. Yeah, bye. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it could have been the last thing we did before we left Fandolin or left uh, Neverwinter. No, I, I like this idea. I like this idea. Sorry. <laughs> Where was this? Oh, um, I don't recall the name of the store, but it was on that one little off street. When you go down the main promenade, and then you go to like the left, and then you take another left. I think, or maybe it was right. There are anyway, a few streets oh, off the main road. Oh. Yeah, that sounds right. Stevedor. White hair, very grim looking. He looked more anxious than grim. 
there's only two moods. No, don't worry about him. He's always like that. Really? Hmm. I thought you were going to say something about those merchants back He's... in camp in uh, Van Halen, but the times are kind of already passed for us to do anything about someone. Sindri looks back at the road. I just thought it was odd. It, so very. I did give him contacts for one of the local ports that if anyone needs to, you know. I mean, if he needs to make a break for it, Fandolin's not that far. Mm -hmm. It's also true. Perhaps I could say do a sending. Oh, I didn't get his name, though. That would make it a little more difficult. <laughs> Perhaps I could send a carrier pigeon. No, he's... Okay, to this sad he looking... is a... Clerk. If he is the person I think it was, I know him from circles, and I think he's just like that. Hmm. You know, when you come from not the greatest of nobility, there are difficulties that you come with. I really wouldn't know. When you have nothing else to worry about, you worry about other things. Hmm. You could always give them something to worry about. And then the meaningless stuff would stop being so concerning. That's what I did. Hmm. It works for some of us, I suppose. Did it work for you, Alessandra? Sorry, what was that? Finding something new to worry about other than the banalities of nobility life. I don't know that I haven't really worried about that. I was always pretty focused on the fact that nobody would let me fight. Mm. What a life to have. But... It is always greener on the other side, as they say. Why? What did you worry about? I mean, unless you live in the underdark, and then I suppose it's always darker on the other side. I suppose, yes. That's true. I suppose I'm more worried about... Well... This happening, I suppose. The, and, you know, being forced to kill people and rule over them like a dictator. So perhaps my worries were valid. So could you back up a little bit? What was that about being forced to rule over people like a dictator? Oh... Looking around, realizing that like she hasn't told anybody Anthea about but Anthea, like where she kind of briefly looks at Anthea of like, oh shit, why did I say anything? Oh no, no, no. You're okay. They'll understand. If you've got um, that sort tap, of tap, power, tap your arm, and influence. Why don't you just become a dictator and then not di not dictate? I suppose. I I feel like in order to become a dictator, you have to. You still have to maintain certain levels of fear and power. And well, I don't know if I want that. Well, I was coming out here to find someone to help, and, and Dia has been helping. Doing my best. And doing a wonderful job. Ah, uh, thanks. Uh, we're... There is a... There is a prophecy... That... Someone like this... And they will bring darkness to the land, blah, blah, blah. And I am hoping that... If I get rid of this... That won't come to pass. Who knows if it is actually a mystical darkness? I don't know. Perhaps it is just symbolic. 
it's very true, but I will take whatever steps I can to not make it about me. I'm the first one in my family in generations that took. My family and isn't all like this. They're all humans. Can't you just decide to not bring darkness? Then it's always well, enough about well, you. Like, you don't need to change who you are. You can just decide. Unless you want to be a really dark edge lord type of person, in which case, all power to you. Go for it. I mean, just, I, you know. I suppose if you really want to kill everybody, as long as you're doing it in combat. Okay, that's not what I said. Legitimate but combat? <laughs> dark uh, edge lord's kind of a cool aesthetic. We do realize that prophecy is accurately predicted. The sage Alondo has predicted <laughs> the names of every single year for reasons. <laughs> I, I understand your concern, but I, I'm with Lady Alessandra. You're making choices that aren't in line with this prophecy. I you understand. Can control your own yes. destiny. Or something. So, does, this, does some, a prophet who prophesizes the name of the years? Mm hmm, the role of years. Or uh, couldn't he just make up a bunch of years and say it was a prophecy and then, and then everybody just, just uses it. With it they assumed it's right and then it's obvious that it's self-fulfilling at that point because who's who's gonna d disagree who cares enough to disagree mm. like, oh i'd have to think about I it, I it might be a scholar. It. instead of numbering them all i mean i suppose there could be some scholars some of them get very worked up about stuff like that oh i know you should admit my teachers I think he's. <laughs> you know, we've met you. We've adventured with you. We fought alongside you. The darkness that you are worried about is not the person we see. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think that thing might be the greater bringer of darkness. And Lyric is pointing at Squish. <laughs> Just like, oh, don't but listen honestly, to them. Squish, that's with that. not very nice. He's adorable. Oh. He is, isn't he? Honestly, oh. I for one, I'm all here for our our great overlord Squish. Oh, oh here, here. Oh. Oh. I would also follow Squish. Oh. Squish will spare me. I fed him oyster shells. Oh. <laughs> Squish looks determined. <laughs> it doesn't have a face, but it looks determined. <laughs> it's filled with determination. Well, um, I also have cans of crab juice if anyone wants some. Why do you? Oh, it's they came from the rat and the stick guy. And oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> Why do they can crab juice? Does it have crab in it? Oh, oh yeah, it's from Squish oh, yeah. Crabs. I'll take one. Thank you. Yep. That sounds mildly disgusting. It is. You get used to it. It's briny. If it, if it is mildly disgusting, why would I drink it? Mm -hmm. It's much better with rum. Sindri oh, <laughs> pu pulls out a little flask. And, uh, it's just more crab juice. Yeah, it's more crab juice. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I got whiskey in my crab juice. Alessandra will Carmilla for that comment and just kind of like, most ugh face uh, ever. <laughs> I do mine with whiskey, but pours a, a shot in each and cheers. It smells disgusting. Oh, cheers. It is. <laughs> She's going to feed the rest of it to Squish. Maybe that will uh, persuade him to spare me in the oncoming Squish apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, do you like that? Yeah, you probably do. Oh. <laughs> Does he have taste buds, though? I don't know. Well, he seems relatively sentient. So, oh. is he one giant? Taste, could come but... with taste. I mean, he's not necessary for all sentience, but... as far as I can tell. But subtle shade thrown <laughs> as she looks at. Sindri. <laughs> 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 
Carmilla's continuing to sip the clam juice with whiskey. Honestly, Listen. you've had worse. Mm hmm. Worst crap. You know what? Alessandro probably has <laughs> too. Because like... I'm betting, like, rare fancy food is, in fact, like, disgusting. In it's most disgusting. Cases. It's usually. It's... Like, all the cheapest stuff in the world used, to, or all the most expensive stuff now used to be the cheapest stuff. Remember, lobsters and chicken wings, man. Lobsters and chicken wings used to be mm -hmm. poor food. Now they are quite expensive. Sindri will pull out one of the rat, like, the preserved rats and be like, hmm. Hmm. That's not good. Does squish? Mm -mm. Does squish eat flesh? Um. Uh. What kind? A rat? He'd it's spicy. Rat. Uh, I'm sure he'd eat it. <laughs> <laughs> like a pencil sharpener. <laughs> I was thinking just trash compactor. All right. So as you're exactly. using your um, your squish garbage disposal unit, <laughs> uh, you're gonna round the Tribor Trail and almost be back at Fandolin. It is getting on to the evening at this point, as you spent a lot of the day traveling, and it's been like a casual pace. You've mostly just been shooting the shit, talking about like 20 questions, you know, the usual road trip stuff. You know, you even did a little pit stop where you tried some new beverages up at the last convenience store along the way type of thing, you know. Ah, they don't sell this type of ration back in Neverwinter. This is a type you only get out of Waterdeep. It's weird that they've stocked the vending machines this high up. Also, what's a vending machine? <laughs> Alessandra will go for the tastiest, cheapest stuff. There's going to be a bunch of like fried potato wedges and stuff like that. Yes. And uh, as you are munching and making your way in, you are going to hear the rumble of an agitated crowd greets you on your journey back into town. It takes only a moment to locate the source of this cacophony, the home of Townmaster Harbin Wester. A gaggle of townsfolk has gathered, some shouting for Harbin to come outside and others decrying his leadership. A few individuals in the crowd display minor injuries and all seem Am anxious again? and frustrated. Oh man, oh man, we missed the riot. You sound so disappointed. I don't know, is it rush week? I don't think so. What As is going you... on here? <laughs> uh, who has a passive perception of 13 or higher? Squish. Sorry. Squish is going to, okay. So, Sindri, you're going to hear Can the following from the crowd. 12 or higher? Uh, so <laughs> what I will allow, yes, I will spend a something good happens, and I will say that you all can hear this as you are paying attention. All right. You can hear a halfling woman complain. I thought the red brands were bad, but at least they never smashed up the bar. Who does that? A human miner shouts, the exchange has fallen over and some of my friends are missing. An annoyed elf man in a baker's apron says, if I see one more of those gremlins come near my shop, I'm hitting them with a rolling pin. I can't take it. A frazzled human woman soothed the toddler in her arms. It'll be all right. We just, we just can't play outside after sundown, okay? And a human man holds up a sketch of an orc woman and yells, My wife's been missing for days! Do something, you coward! Stop this! Alessandra's gonna whistle loudly. All right, make me a... Cut through it. Make me an intimidation or persuasion roll. Uh, oh, you know what? Persuasion's better. Let's go with that. If I can zoom in enough to read it. Uh, 21. 21? All right, so the crowd is going to stop and turn toward you. Um, w we've only been gone a week. What, what happened? What hasn't happened, one of them said. Oh, it's those guidance counselor people. There's all sorts of weird stuff going on around here. Crimes and slander. And someone knocked okay. over the shrine! That's not okay. nice. Um, We've been gone for three days, like six days. Was there an, something happened and then everything happens after that? Like, I don't know, a mine collapsed? No mine collapsed, but the mining guild's about to fall over! 
The darn so thing is structurally unstable, and I can't find some of my friends. As you might have heard me just say. We need to talk to Harbin Wester. Wester, get your get your butt out here. Your keister needs to talk to us, Meester. I feel like threatening might not be getting you the route that you want. Um, what's going on? So they're gonna say trouble, and as they do, Sindri. Yes, I got gonna, that. <laughs> uh, they're they're gonna just like start talking over each other, Sindri. As they are all kind of talking over each other and repeating, like, some little, some kids broke into the bar and stole all my stuff. Well, some weird freaks did this. And some, you're going to see the back door to Harbin Wester's house, uh, Harbin Weston, uh, open up and like wave at you. Psst. And Sindri will. You know, that's all very concerning. I will just go do something for a moment and we'll be right back to hear all your concerns. Okay, bye. We'll just put our bags down. We just got in. Yep. Trail that's still on us. They're goblins. No, they're gremlins. No, they're kobolds. You're an they're idiot. They're themselves. Let's, they let's get in there. Uh, yeah. So as soon as you get near the door, a hand lurches out, grabs you and pulls you in. Oh, thank God. I understand that they're angry, but... Do they expect me to take care of everything? Harbin Wester says, his hair all mussed up, looking very, very stressed. I can't take on a, a gaggle of good for run nothing ruffians myself. I can't even stop anyone who's determined from breaking b buildings and stealing things. Absurd. Oh, thank the gods you're back. And he's going to slam the door when the last of you comes in. Look, it have only been gone for a few days, but a good series of crimes have besought the town. As far as we can tell, they're g -g 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 goblins. Uh, everyone's under arrest and uh, under unrest, and, and the townsfolk seem to think that I should protect Vandalin, but I, I, I'm not an investigator. I'm not a constable. I'm a bureaucrat. Mm -hmm. Have you hosted watch? Most of it's just happened today, and it's all kind of come to a head. But thank the gods you're here. Look, how would you like to have that per diem extended? All right. I, mean, I wouldn't complain. Do you have paper and pencil? <laughs> Charcoal? Yes. Excellent. How about a table? Uh, yes, I, I do have a table. Wonderful. Let's set it up outside, let them write down each other's things, and promise that we will deal with it. That should hopefully derail them that something's happening. That's and we'll get the information without them yelling over each other constantly. And I'm willing to offer you a... them from you. Oh, that sounds uh, that sounds lovely. I'm willing to offer you just stipend of fifty gold pieces. Up front. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, up front total. But I will give you another hundred and fifty hmm. each upon completion of the investigation. Hmm. Wow. Um anybody with a passive insight of 12 or higher knows he is very badly leveraged right now and could probably be pushed for more. <laughs> Do we need more though? My passive insight is, because I don't think my jack of all trades applies to passive things, does it? Uh, it does. Oh, it does? Okay, then it I does. have exactly 12. Then you know that you could leverage him. So how about a little bit more up front and then we'll talk about maybe more like 200 after? <sighs> yeah, uh, uh, you can go ahead and make me a persuasion or, or intimidation roll. Uh, persuasion is honestly the same as my intimidation. All right, let's see how well you do. Oh, God. <laughs> oh god wait did you say i had inspiration before i did say you have inspiration before for, inspiration. for remembering to take notes yay that's better what is it so for persuasion that's a 22 you have doubled the dc so congrats look i don't give two fucks if you are there and take care of this right now and agree to be my constables i'll double it i'll give you a hundred gold pieces up front each and three hundred each upon completion 
but you have to go now. You have to go now and you have to, you have to, you have to take care of this. This is not a permanent position though, correct? Look, you just need to solve the problems that are right here. Further things can be agreed upon or negotiated accordingly. Sure, that sounds good. Alessandra has already like nodded to Sindri and has gone to just grab a table. Okay, so they're dragging it out. <laughs> and as you're dragging out, the, the crowd outside is still like clamoring and stuff. Um, and Alessandra is going to go out wi with and just be like, whistle and just enough. This is not going to help anybody. <laughs> oh, and if any of them can't write, since they're not all noble or very rich. I'm sure one um, of them can and can act as secretary. Yeah, so someone can can do a dictation, sort of. That's Hello, great. everyone. Yes, I desire. I finally, I, 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 I missed hearing you. You fraud. <laughs> we hate you. I, do, I, I love you too, citizens. I, fear not. I have, I, we have acquired the services of those who took down the red brands and also took down this spider and have stormed Craigmar Keep uh, Castle. Um, Castle. And, and they are here to help. So please welcome the, um, what, what is your group name again? We don't really have one. We're just really helpful. Yeah. Well, your own guiding lights are here to aid you in this time of peril. Please, uh, tell them all of your problems. I officially deputize you as as the investigators of Fandolin. Good luck. Mm. And he's going to slink Excellent. back into hiding. Does anybody here... Is, is anybody here good at writing? And I think... That is where we're going to call a game for the night. And she's just going nice. to organize them into doing what she wants and stop yelling at her. All right. And uh, uh, Ella, Carmilla will stand behind and intimidate anyone that she can't persuade. That if is... she needs further, though, she will pop her wings. Perfect. Just to look like crazy, like majestic, kind of like, oh, God, what the hell? Yeah. I think. While you're doing that side, as people are finishing up, like, actually having, like, given the details and are done with that, I think Lyric's going to try and de-escalate the frustration with, like, maybe an impromptu, like, music or, like, some games if there's kids around and just try and, like, mm -hmm. turn it into more of, like, a fun thing. Nice, nice. Nice. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of, uh, Fandelver and Below. We're back, baby! I am very excited Ooh. to be back. Uh, does it feel good to be back and playing this? And, yes. um, I really think that this, this module gets a lot more fun after we get the Lost Mind stuff out of the way, which we're finally done with. Uh, we got some character drops today, and, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a it lot of fun. It was a fun role-playing episode, honestly. Right? I was hoping that you guys mm -hmm. had some fun with that. You actually so made I it... I am really sad. Second Gen was not in the chat when I made the has-been reference that oh. killed Amy. <laughs> and I was yeah. so sad that she wasn't in this game for that reason. Because yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, man. I could have gotten two! You could have. Could have. That would have been great. You got me too. I, nice. I got you a couple times. I've been I singing know. it in my head since. <laughs> that was amazing. All right. So... Uh, folks, that is going to be it for us tonight here on Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk. A big thank you, of course, to our sponsor, Bookworm Games. Go use code DorkTales to save 15%. And a big thank you to all of our patrons on patreon.com slash dorktales who keep the lights on in here and keep our boats floating. If you want to join them and support the stream, you can join the likes of my mom. Don't you want to hang out with my mom? She's super cool. Uh, our divine patron. Our demonic patrons, Precarious and Kelowna Curd, who I see in the chat right now. Hello, Kelowna Curd. Let me know if there's any devils or demons or loths or anything that you want to show up in games. Uh, our Wizards of the Patreon, Tammy the Forever Cleric, the Ink Goblin and Sorcerer Sanguine, and the High Council of the Patreon, uh, Terran, who you heard about earlier, uh, Dustin, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha, Urquhart, Chef Aladeth, LaRuke, Mike Baxter, and Iridian. You all are amazing, and you're all amazing for watching. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night over on Patreon, where you get a bunch of additional content, like, a, like nine extra games this month, uh, with, uh, season four, year four, episode three? 
of uh, Strixhaven. So go hang out with us over there. I think it's episode three. And um, then on Wednesday, we're back with Transylvania by night, or uh, the Transylvania Chronicles. Uh, and Thursday night, we have our finale of our sponsored stream of Our Brilliant Ruin, which has been an absolute hoot. So be sure to come back and we will see you next time here on Fandelver and Below. Good night, everyone.